the president promised so many things, nothing. At the end, the president said that we will not be spectators within our own economy. And we're not hearing on the field. Why people in, 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 in that kind of move, why people just in charge, they discussing the next day you will see him singing, the next day you will see him studio, the next day you will see him dancing buka, the next day you will see him doing something what president has supposed to do. When you president, you bear the pain for the citizen. The citizen should be happy before you be happy. But president, we are just in care. Why are going to listen to president? We are for the only thing are going there for president. We are, we have a teacher. We will just, just see my teacher. Who bad, Mr. President? Great president, 10%. Look at JFK. Somebody not get money. $700 government hospital charge the person, the person go jump, running away, the person die. So I'm appraising. My final words that we want a peaceful election. All the far official or anybody that was sent for the, by the U.S. government, we are taking protest, maybe very worried for to the U.S. embassy to let the U.S. government know that no sanction official must partake in our election. The same vote that carry him there, the same vote should take him from there. You know, it's slow because the economic system we have in the country. People priority is school. And how to get the money is not how. So how many people want to put money in their country to have to work in mass? People even get into what we do and go found there just for sustainability. Yeah, as far as many of us who are, are doing this business, we are going to school, we are asked to graduate. So we are going to you know, deployable conditions. For the past five years, we are achieved what? My editor power, the property rate was at a percentage of 50%. Now, they keep on the platform of our hope for change. But then they have added 2%, it's 52%. Then. That is a deployable rate. They took up 1,000 libraries should be a floor. All of these kids were cajoled. I said that in Nigeria, it's just a jet of rams and trumps that the president wants to say to us. You got Joe, we are already voted us. I can tell you, and we are angry with the Virginia, so we are. We see that it's a mistake. Not let that, Mr. Salita, you not let that. But send the president come. I tell you, thank you. My life, they were a My editor, I vote for my editor, but I enjoy it. Say, I vote for president. I enter, I vote for Joe, we are. Nothing. And for me, I will not vote for Joe, we are. And I will consider that speech as the last speech that will be coming from Obamuya. It's glaring. The fights are written on the street, on the horses, even the trees. What they want is a kangaroo agreement to, to just control the library to on life. The sets of the past three years on the travel and I'm been easy. Yeah, when you can on travel, they even need correct 1,500. Not easy. Tomorrow in school travel. What about senior? The president promised. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papi, the happy start giving all from this one here. Welcome, 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 welcome. Yeah. Uh, they don't dash it. You gotta... Today, that's your day. <laughs> well, we'll see your eyes. You, got <laughs> you will see. <laughs> Today, that's your day. We're going to see your face. <laughs> say, let me say, yeah, uh, um, how are you doing? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm good. This is this, this, uh, this weekend. We had a very... Um, um, we had a weekend. Uh, we, PI, I had uh, met JMV over the weekend. Um, I saw you guys. I saw yeah, on, you all. Uh, on the pictures. Uh, on uh, Saturday, actually, we met on Saturday. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Was it Saturday? Friday or Saturday? It was Saturday after the funeral. Saturday. Okay. I'm sorry for that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't attend the funeral, but it was Saturday. Uh, we had a mm-hmm. very uh, good long conversation with him. Talk about Liberia. Uh, talk about his uh, his plan for the country and um, how he intends to govern. Um, on the, uh, after winning in October, it was a very good conversation. I uh, we had a nice time with Pia and. Uh, Many other supporters of uh, JMB. Uh, it was a wonderful conversation there in uh, in Delaware. Well, today is Monday, January thirty, 30th day of January AD uh, twenty twenty three. It's an interesting day because today is the day that uh, President Weir gave uh, gave his uh, final um, State of the Nation uh, his six years. Um, after today, uh, with the help of God, uh, we won't hear that speech again from him. Uh, this will be the, the, the last speech for him. And uh, I'm sure some of you will talk about it in the training issue. We'll talk more about it. Uh, we also have joining us today uh, Dr. Sakwi Marapa, Dr. Sakwi Marapa, who um, is a professor at the University of Toledo there in Ohio. Um, he will Join us and we'll have a very fruitful conversation around our candidate, GMB, around the, we'll talk some more about his speech. If you're listening, talk about the conditions of our people in Liberia and his uh, impression. We'll look at uh, all of those cross-cutting issues. Let me say a big welcome to all of our students. Kindly share the show. I see uh, all of you watching, uh, Richard Cully, GD, um, Sandy Gege, Scott, Morris Harris, uh, Harriet, uh, Joseph Fire. Um, Jesse Pilo, Rose, Jerry, Harriet, Johnson, Gaffey, um, Sanon, Jonathan, Austin Davis, uh, Mose, Mose Ben, Prince Dolo, um, Prince Dolo, uh, Prince Praise, um, Saka Doss, Joe, Triple, Amos, Derek, Fumba Sese, uh, Roland Temer, Prince Praise, John Obele, Triple Coning, Regina Benson, Samuel Salibasa, Fumba Sese, Amos Derek, uh, Charles Warner, um, I see Young, um, Charles Young, Lawrence, uh, Sally Kamara, uh, Jenny Chala Phillips, uh, Mary McLean, um, Lawrence Macaulay, Sophie Metzger, um, Howard Menzger, Charles Coleman, Abel Johnson, Gary McCall, uh, Osimu, um, Pazawi, uh, Mahawa Son, Remington, Emmanuel, Basil Oliva, Alex, Oscar, Mohammed, um, Nakwa, Moses, Joseph, uh, Geraldine Tuber, Wilson, um, Richard Harmon, um, Nakwa, Moses, Sam, Zor, Achik, the Wallow, um, James Flomo, Geraldine, Basil Oliva, Emmanuel Kwasi, Remington, Roberts, um, let's see, um, Papi, V, um, V, Jamande, um, Mama Azik, uh, Mary, um, Emmanuel Kamara, G. Clay Patokuya, Samin Doman, um, Nicole Swa, I see Wolo, um, watching, um, <clears throat> I see Azik, Azik Jackson, um, Kona, Kona Koto, Famata Weeks, Dixon Global, uh, Cecilia Badio, Bermu Jue, Marcos, Semzo, James Neal, uh, Raz, Janga Connet, uh, George, uh, Bono Jackson, Julius Conan, Tamba, James Fala, Fumi Masekwe, how are you, Fumi, Siddiqui, Kamara, Rita, Temet, Jose, Jose, Kamara, uh, Jose, I see Jose Davis, uh, Rita, Temet, Sam, Sia, T, Makase, Samuel Kamara, uh, Sondieta, Keita, uh, Wilfred, um, CBO, Henry CBO, Cornelius Hunter, uh, welcome, Mr. Hunter, Lamin Conan, Prince, and, and and everybody, Joshua and all of you, Rita and everybody, welcome. Kindly share the show, Tamalami and everybody. Uh, Alfred Jacker, Cornelius Bala, kindly share the show, Benedict, uh, William, and all of you, Rufus, uh, John Green, how are you, my brother? Uh, Kit Johnson, Mohammed, Isaac Molu, all of you, kindly share the show. Let's uh, walk out here and let's get as many questions as we can here to have our conversation. Um, we come to you live. 
on the Bushwa Radio FM 98.1 in Maserato, Premier FM 98.1 there in Banga Bong County, um, Radio Tupa FM 89.1 in Grand Basso County, Voice of Lofa FM 99.3 in Vonjima Lofa County, uh, Radio Joy Africa FM 97.5 in my Gibi, and of course, Voice of Pompa FM 106.5. Guys, um, one of the major trending issues today, I'm not sure any of you listen to that long, windy, meandering, and uh, useless uh, speech, more like a recitation um, from the president. We need to... oh, have feedback from somebody. It's me, I'm sorry. Yeah, let me just mute you a little bit. It's you, you in the studio play your... The oh, whole that means I'm nice. getting feedback. I'll stop that music a lot. Uh, except she listened to some device while she on the show, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, was, it was me. I was trying to end your no na kindergarten with a machine. You don't want mommy there, please. Yeah, I don't, don't mind you me. You know, I, I don't know how many of you listen to that crap, but we are today. Uh, that's why I, I, I was talking. I said, hurry, Fini, let's start our show because it was long, windy, meandering. The president was mispronouncing, really like a third grader. Could barely, could barely understand his own nonsense. And uh, mm -hmm. instead of it being the state of the nation, he thought to give a, a, a report of his, of his stewardship over the last five years. Uh, we've said it yet before that uh, in the last five years, President Weir has only succeeded in 8% of his premises, 24 out of 294, only 8%. Uh, if this was in any school, um, yeah, NTR, they get you NTR, you, you're not going anywhere, it's complete NTR. And this is where they sing the song to you, say goodbye to you, teacher. <laughs> and, and, and I was laughing on Facebook because the flow of different messages coming from people. Some people talking about go, papi, go where your PB lies. You remember that song that King Taylor? <laughs> well, I'll be as fun. Let's talk about it. Let's laugh. Let's, uh, uh, let's, let's, let's hear what you have to say. And let me say welcome to Chupo. Yeah, sorry for all the mix up. You know, uh, uh, oh, P, I got to meet you. Let me say welcome to Chupo all the way there in Banga. Chupo, you got to listen to the speech in Banga there. He's yes, up. yes, I'm actually listening oh. to the show. And, and it was, was actually uh, on the speech for air. Yeah. Say that. The speech. Yes, the speech was aired on Premium FM here in Banga. And me. Yo, we say your data of on. Yo, we say your data on that recitation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know, it's, it's actually a call to duty, and the management actually deemed it necessary to do that because of, I mean, the people in the radio land so that they can listen. Exactly. To what is that? Listen to the last. I would dig, I would dig deep into some of the nonsense. Uh, that was spewed by him. Uh, you know, um, that speech was more of a farewell speech. And thank you, Rufus. It was a farewell speech. I think uh, it was his final goodbye. Uh, six years of, uh, of I say it was the end of an era. The mistakes we made in 2017, well, the mistakes, quote unquote, that we thought we made, uh, we know what happened in 2017. Uh, finally, six years of uh, have come and gone. People thought six years was uh, was a was more like uh, the you know was twenty five years. Many of them lost their friendship, treated people with disrespect, uh, abandoned their constituents, and now they are back six years later, thinking that they can hoodwink our people into believing that they offer anything better in the next six years. Uh, October this year. This year, uh, hopefully, uh, and I'm sure we can put them out and uh, bring into leadership a more experienced uh, leader, somebody who has a nuanced understanding about the issues. Uh, Joseph Buaka is certainly that man. That's why we're supporting on this platform. We've stated that times so about number that he is our candidate and he is the best person who can steer the affairs of Liberia in the next six years. So let me begin with you, Pastor Mo, and I know um, uh, you've been following events across social media. What what What's trending on your end? Well, I, <clears throat> I want to thank God for, his, for all of us to be here again. This is the election year. We thank God that we counted among the living. I want to say 
Good evening to the veteran, Lady Dead, our mom, Auntie Miata. Also, I want to say good evening to Chupo. Welcome back. And the rest of the team, to our many viewers that got us here, as, as the Dean said, keep sharing until you reach 1,000. You guys are doing well. Keep sharing. I want to say good evening to our many, many listeners there in Radio Lane. I can't wait for the class reload. Someone they can text me on, on Tuesday. Are you guys coming on today? They can text me on, on Thursday. Are you guys coming on today? I said, no way. They say, okay, we're not missing. But uh, I want to say thank you to the rest of you, you know, for uh, searching to get the facts, news, and come and deliver it. I think we are doing a great help to our people. There is a lot of training issues in Liberia. <laughs> it is a lot, but I can't cover all. But I will just say a few that I believe caught my attention. I listened to a video from the police director speaking with authority and threatening the Liberian people and talking about anybody start violence in this election, they will go after them and they will defend the nation with their blood and sweat. I think, I think the police director missed the whole mark. I think he misdirected his, his ammunition to the wrong people. Because if we check violence history during the election, the CDC that has been causing violence, and who have been arrested. So the police director cannot threaten us, but we can warn him. Because if he think he can threaten us, for them to rig the election, the line, because some of us will be in Liberia. And he that more trained than some of us, because when some of us was in operation, he was working, he was assigned in logistic, distributing uniform. That's the job that I know him to be doing. When we were in full operation, when Marovia was upside down, we were in full operation. So he can't threaten anybody. So there's a caveat to you. It's not a threat, it's a warning. You better rethink on what you said, but we got you on tip. The next one you have to do a bit twelve in uh, 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 um, in is that river G? Uh, uh, river says river, river says something interesting says. took place there. I don't know if you guys read it in a mm -hmm. in a front page newspaper. Uh, this guy that should be uh, uh, running against him had his his bill bow up bill to our way uh, uh, this guy name is andrew peters andrew peter had a bill bow up where bill to our way went to have his rally and his people broke down andrew's uh, 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 peter bill bow and it, it, it created chaos decided to throw stones and while throwing stones bit bit to our way had to escape for his life while escaping for his life, a uh, bullet was fired, grenade was released. So who released grenade? If you read the front page Africa, it tells you that grenade was released and, and they had to go to the police station for refuge and, and later on, calm was, was restored. So, and, and also to my nine people that spoke in the analyst newspaper, is concerned about early campaigning. And I think it is belated I think Tupan Antipeter is, is benefiting from this government. Why now he is complaining? I believe they all they are feeling the pinch of the nerve uh, of, that is going on in, Li in Liberia. And, uh, and uh, uh, um, most of all, an advocate, a voice that have been speaking against the government, that have been speaking against the government. Prince Colley, head of the Yana Boys Association. I saw JMB posted his photo because uh, apparently he and JMB has been in constant contact. And as I learned, he was hit by a vehicle. Up to now, they can't find the vehicle. So this government has the way of silencing critical voices. You know, and, and it is it is sad because I don't care what they do, the people will speak up. You know, so, but let me start there. I know we'll go into George Weah, 
or, or, or state of the nation address. I hope we can go into it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Chupo. I just want to say thank you to all of the panelists. You're not getting me? So I just want to say good evening to all of the panelists and has up to all of our people following in Radio Land. Uh, so, so many trending issues from this side of the country, specifically Bon County. Uh, so, ahead of the, the speech deliverance of, of the President of the Republic of Liberia, Chief Dr. George Manu, where I mean, several citizens in Bonk actually expressed the level of sovereign they are engulfed with on his regime. So according to them, following his ascendancy to state power uh, in 2018, they said their life condition prior to his ascendancy as president of the Republic of Liberia, things were, I mean, a bit okay with them. Until in chemo basis, uh, change for hope, I mean, uh, manifest way he said he's going to liberate I mean, Liberians out of agile poverty. When he said he's going to to lift people, I mean, one million youths out of poverty and provide jobs opportunity for people across the country. But according to the citizens, they said following his ascendancy at the president of the Republic of Liberia, he's yet to live up to some of these I mean, commitment. And one thing they, they actually squares on, they said uh, that they were, they were actually certain that the president was going to highlight is the ease of this low far road. This low far road, he's, he's so, I mean, serious about that. It's, it's, it's actually nearing completion. And maybe in a, in a month or two for now, the road is going to be completed. But as uh, citizens who I spoke with on the low far road, they actually made it clear to me that in fact, the dust on that road, I'm talking about the Lofa road that he squares in his annual message, that the road is nearing completion. He said the road, the road is, is, is very dusted up. And contrary to what he said, that the road is nearing completion, what he said about, about uh, 65% of the road is yet to have paved cement quota. He said about 65% of the road. So that's 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 contrary to his 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 message that I mean I think 45 plus kilometer of, of the road is actually completed on his watch and is, is going to be subsequently turned over. So some of them said, I mean, that speech in deliver, I mean that's what they believe that that speech in deliver is actually his farewell speech. Because some of them said he has done nothing. I mean, like absolutely nothing, quote unquote, because I'm quoting them. He said, I mean, they said he has done nothing, absolutely nothing to alleviate Liberians. I'm talking about the ordinary citizens from our job poverty. Because according to them, uh, there were so many promises he made and some of which he's yet to even fulfill. And they said all, all he's, he's in guilt is, I mean, say engaging is, is to, to actually embezzle, I mean, the country money and where he high ranking members of his government are being placed on sanction. And that clearly indicates that, I mean, this government is corrupt to the foliers, I mean, to, to the highest degree. And, and majority of them actually express disenchantment following his speech. And some of them even express disenchantment prior to the delivery of his speech. In, I mean, in the nation's capital. And to just conclude quickly, uh, citizens of Bonk are actually expressing concern uh, over why uh, the Ministry of Agriculture is not being given to citizens in Bonk County. Because a reliable source, I was informed by a reliable source that, I mean, the Vice President of the Republic of Liberia, Chief Dr. Joe Howard Taylor, has the, I mean, has the, the, the power over the Ministry of Agriculture uh, and, and, and another agency, that's another ministry on her watch as Vice President, that she has power over to actually appoint or to make recommendation 
that, I mean, a particular minister can be taken. But then the citizen said, as a vice president who hails from Bonn County, I mean, a two-time, I mean, rep, uh, senatorial candidate, a two-time successful senatorial candidate in Bonn County who won, I mean, on a successful two-term election, he said, you cannot be this devilish to your people in Bonn. Because you who have, I mean, authority over the Ministry of Agriculture, and, and then you took that position because a son of bank was actually occupying that position uh, prior to, 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 I mean, in recent time, this a son of bank was actually occupying that position. And, and then uh, they actually went against him and took him from there on grounds that he was not having, I mean, the required education as, as been what they said. He was not actually having the required education. And then uh, dozens of the citizens said, okay, if he doesn't have the, the, the right education, then I guess another qualified sons and daughter of this county will actually be given that position. But contrary to many of them believe, I mean, that position was taken from them and was not given them or any other ministerial position. Uh, and, and, and not to get me wrong, not about these, these sub, I mean, ministerial positions like deputies, minister or so, but I'm talking about ministerial position where in honor the jurisdiction of the Liberia vice president that she can even make a recommendation that a person can be, I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, appointed as minister. But they said she took that position, or they took that position in collaboration of district monthly representative. They took that position from the son of this county and gave it up to another southeasterner something they feel doesn't actually mean well for inhabitants of Bonn County. So, okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Anthony <clears throat> excuse me, the poor quality of my voice, the... Um... You're muted. Okay, I'm muted. It's good you didn't hear that. Good evening, everybody out there. Um... Africa and Europe and early afternoon to our friends in the US. My trending issues very, very, very quickly. It's a pleasure to be here, by the way. And I'm very excited about tonight because uh, of, we're going to host uh, Professor Malakpa and I'm looking forward to meeting him. I started reading his book. Okay, um, I've highlighted this before, and I think it's only it's only right that we keep highlighting it. Um, the growing trend of ritualistic killings in our country worries me. It, it, it takes me back. It takes me back to the '60s and the '70s. And, uh, and I keep asking, have we not learned, learned anything? Um, and what, what even got to me, I'm talking specifically of the two-year-old baby um, information coming out, is that her grandfather was involved. And this is not surprising for me because as we've seen in the cases of uh, rape and um, other abuses, um, family members are always the first suspects in these you know, killings and murder cases, etc. So I'm appealing to parents and grandparents in Liberia, if you can hear me, this year is not a good year for our children. It's not a good year actually for anybody, but uh, according to the myth and the tradition, uh, the boyos are looking for young virgins like the little girl. They are looking for talented, talented and creative people. 
So musicians and artists, beware. And also the search for disabled people, uh, disabled, disabled in the hunchbacks or those that really can't defend themselves. Uh, that is how the history has been. So you're trying to protect your children. Try and protect your children. Be aware. This is election year. And unfortunately, in the oldest republic in Africa, we are still ad adhering to some of our most gruesome traditions. Um, Worrying also is the death of Patrick Colley, um, the Yana Boy Association. Prince. Prince, I'm sorry. Uh, Colley. And I read that it was a hit and run. And it didn't, I didn't read whether it was in the night or the day, but I'm just saying, so we've reached the place now where Motorists drive, knock somebody down, and they don't even stop. They don't even stop to see if they've hurt the person, if they can assist them to go to the hospital. Uh, before I even begin to try and see, you know, conspiracy or whatever in it. And for me, finally, have I had my three minutes, uh, Stephen? For me, finally, and you don't know how sorry I was that I was not here on Friday. It might be stale. <laughs> it might be stale to some people. And it's a good thing I was not here on Friday because I have had a little bit more time to get to know Mr. Stanton with a spoon. The story of Stanton with a spoon is not just about Stanton with a spoon. It is about us Liberians. It's about us Liberians. Because as a Liberian, my country name all over the US in a crime like this, unlike other people who want to pray for Mr. Witherspoon, I'm angry, I'm hurt. My country is now portrayed not only as a shithole country, but as a drug nation And now our citizens are going abroad and, cre uh, and creating and uh, uh, participating in crimes that bring us to the fore. And others say we should pray for him. It is an indictment of us Liberians. No more values, no more standards. Because I asked, I left Liberia in 2018. I keep up with the activities of my country on a daily basis before I left. I had never heard the name of Stanton Witherspoon before I left. But in a matter of three years, this gentleman was able to come to my country, our country, and literally buy up everybody until he had the direct number to the minister of state, to the president, to the speaker. Huh? Simply because he had money? And I got some other friends there who were running behind him too, but when I called their name, God, I know they were just catching hard time. 
everybody running. This man comes into our country, buys up radio station, set up information to be an influencer in the politics of our country. And nobody saw anything wrong with it. Nobody asked questions. Nobody asked, what does he do? How does he do it? Which Liberian, which African goes to America and make millions of dollars that they can go back and just spread and buy up everybody? Our parents worked too hard for our country's name. Our parents were proud. Proud. I am proud. Why would Liberians go and disgrace us? And disgrace us. Liberian nurses who went through this, the, 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 the system, they're sitting down there now questioning when they will call them in. When did we become so greedy, my people? When did we become so greedy? That's what's wrong with our country. This is an indictment of us Liberians to show where we have come. There's no more about values. No more about values or standards. You got it, money, whether you crook, murderer, you all right in Liberia. I want my children, my grandchildren to come back to my father's country. And that is not the Liberia we want. So all of us need to check ourselves. Thank you. I mean, any other you you couldn't have said it. You couldn't have said it any better. Um, the um, what we've witnessed in the last year has been something that has brought more shame to our nation than even during the war years. Mm -hmm. um, three of our officials were publicly disgraced for corruption. Uh, we saw that the U.S. arrested, uh, first it was Sheikh Bashir. Yeah. Walter Morovia used his wealth to gain fame. Then it was Cassell. Went to Morovia, established a political party, started making hair wave across the country only for him to have been uh, arrested. And then came Stanton. Um, but it don't speaks. For, don't forget Ellen Cochran. Ellen Cochran, yeah, Ellen Cochran also. It speaks to a, to how the new dispensation about wealth in politics and how uh, when you don't have money, people don't value you. This is an eye opener to many of us that uh, instead of us valuing earnest people, people who are earnest, people who work hard for their resources, uh, we tend to pay more attention to people who we don't know, no trace of how they they got rich, but who will go home and just dish our money to people is something that we should all pay attention to. But let me welcome Martin Colley. Uh, Martin Colley is, uh, is an exile librarian activist, <laughs> as he calls himself. Martin, welcome to the... Pro Martin, you need to bring your camera down a little bit. Yeah. Well, we can uh -huh. barely see your face. We can barely see you. Uh -huh, that's much better. Yeah, that's much the, better. Martin, the, what's the, trending from your head? No, but we still can't machine? see your mouth, my man. Do that yeah, camera. Yeah, right cover your face. <laughs> He trying to hide the fat. Well, Marty trying to download. <laughs> Marty, what's trending for your end? You got you got three minutes to, to talk. Marty, you muted. You muted. 
I actually cut off my other light. I was sleeping. I just woke up to the show. I knew you lost track of the time. <laughs> yeah, I just woke up and my light is still off. Uh, but I, I would like to appreciate you, um, Stephen, for the for the opportunity to say a few words. Thanks to the class reloader family, especially anti Miata. Uh, veteran Pia, uh, Senator Dillon, Reverend Window, and everybody, all the contributors. I'm a religious follower of uh, the class reloadly because this is the town square of information, education, and entertainment. I get I, I get laugh at our statement, man. I get laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I sat by listening to Anti Miata, and I too became emotional. Uh, the situation in our country is quite pathetic. We are in a cash twenty two situation between the scissors. We have lost our way completely in terms of morals. <laughs> uh, the, the value system of the past is no more. And we need to bring it back because if we don't, the next generation risks a lot. I see a lot of people praying for criminals Prayer now is a commodity in Liberia. It is on sale. It's unfortunate. The other day I checked, it was Nathaniel McGill, an entire prayer band in my Gibi. Instead of them praying for McGill to restitute the stolen money, they are praying for the US government to relieve the sanction of McGill. Can you imagine? When did we reach this, this far? How come? The men stole millions of dollars from you, deprive your children of quality education, deprive you of basic primary health care, and you are praying for him to steal more? You even want to make him senator at your expense? So he goes to the legislature and begins to receive brown envelopes and some book us concessions that will keep you in perpetual poverty? How did we reach this far? It's unfortunate. And I hope Liberians will learn their lesson, especially from this latest credential fraud involving the CEO of, um, of uh, Spoon FM. You know, that's an interstate crime anyway. It's too big. Most people don't understand the context and legal implications. That's why they are taking it lightly and joking about let's pray, let's pray. Pray for what? Ask them, I ask one of them, why are we praying? She could not say anything. She just told me, let's just pray. Pray for what? There must be a reason for praying. Even when Moses went up the mountain, there was a reason for him going up the mountain to pray. You, could, you don't just get up and start praying. Prayer is purposeful. I'm not a pastor, but prayer is purposeful. You can't just get up, you start praying to God. Praying to God for what? God needs to know why you are praying to him for. <laughs> You know, so it's it's really unfortunate. Um, I'm Stephen for us to, for us to turn our back on justice and embrace impunity simply because our of our association politically or economically, it's wrong. It's dead wrong, and we are going nowhere with that. But what's trending for Massad? Um, I just watched the the president. You know, uh, you just invited me for like ten minutes, fifteen minutes, so. Yeah, so <laughs> I know you have your guess, but uh, oh, you, you, you said what? A uh, Martin, ten minutes? I told you, I told you part of the show today. Why would you be for ten know, minutes? Eh? My man. <laughs> no, but yeah, but that 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 for ten minutes. That, no, that's no, that's no, I said a whole hour. I said whole hour. You have a whole hour. That's a me. That's a meme I just learned of recently that people call Steven, and that's the calling state actor. <laughs> I want to put an adjective to yours. 
you are a senior state actor. And today's a, <laughs> today's a serious day, Martin. So you got to stay on. Even though we bring a guest, that guest is here for only one hour. Uh, and since you religiously follow, I'm sure the second portion of, of today's section, uh, those who have interest, I hope we're in window talking about that. Those who have interest in talking about the, you know, look, but looking for some sparks, even though we, we discuss it in detail on Wednesday or so, but something can still be said about, you know, the, the state of the nation's address today. And so there's no time as important as today. So it's a good thing that you own. I didn't know the arrangement between you and Stephen, but I don't think it should be for 10, 15 minutes, as you said. I think it's part of the sacrifice. You're doing a lot for Liberia, and staying on here for today could be a part of that lot you're doing. That's my appeal. Okay, so um, <laughs> the, the, the initial conversation I had with um, our veteran Zizu was because he knows about my hustle. This is my hustle time. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> So it means that it means so that I, I, I want to get him that one hour up here. <laughs> it, 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 it means that I'm not going, going to hustle play. anymore. That's and exactly. I'm an excuse. That's, However, that's exactly. That's, it, I, can't, I can't imagine. That's exactly what makes it a sacrifice. Exactly. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can, that you can, that you can sacrifice hours. your hustle to be. Just consider that tears. Just, just consider that tears that empty me after just share. Yeah, sure. I was sure. deeply emotional. Yeah. Yes, exactly. just, just take that into consideration and just for today, make that sacrifice. Maybe Zuzu will, Zuzu will send wave something or do something. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's, it's, you know, um, quite frankly, I agree with you. All of us have to sacrifice at this point uh, because the Republic is really, really in trouble. And it takes the collective sacrifice of patriots to redeem our dying Republic. See what they did today, for example. The purpose of the State of the Nation address is to talk serious business, not to go and be clapping and chanting battle cries. That's not a ground for battle cry or battle cries. No. Your last State of the Nation address, at least, it should be a source of inspiration. But we didn't get anything. We didn't get anything. Like you said, we'll discuss it. However, I just want us to, to think about uh, the fact that our country is is going nowhere, you know, it has gone nowhere under President George Manuel Weir. Corruption is is everywhere, you know. Public service is at an all time low. A mind trending issue is the fact that someone who sits very close to the president cannot even compose a fitting simple sentence and it has a reflection on the presidency we may we 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 we, we, we may take that lightly but it does have a reflection on the presidency you you you, you can be presidential aide look at when you are serving as presidential press secretary veteran pia look at the way you compose yourself look at the issues you put forward look at the recommendations you made Look at some of the analysis you provided. People respected the presidency because of your voice, your intellect. You provided policy prescriptions to issues. You get one bad ball running all around and writing everything on Facebook every time he doesn't know just anything. So a friend from Ghana wrote me and said, can you guys tell him to stop posting on Facebook because he's a representation of the presidency? I said, well, we have told him many times, you know. Uh, but again, his boss is a representation of the very mess we are talking about in the country. So it's time for Liberian to let him go. There is no compromise on this specific issue. We may disagree on other issues, but on this specific issue about Mr. We Are Going, I think we have agreed unanimously. Yeah, we may have differences. We may have... Um, uh, political disassociations, but on this question of whether we are should leave or not, I think almost all of us have agreed on one thing. It's time for him to go. It's time for him to go. As we look at his st State of the Nation address and various items he talked about, we will provide further reasons why it is time for him to go. Time is out, and there's no option. There's no way out. Only one way, and that way is to take the exit. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. 
<laughs> and, 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 and that's the general consensus across the country. Um, we all must leave. And, and, and I'm glad a lot of persons are saying that the speech today was a goodbye speech, his final speech. Uh, because it was, besides the, the fact that the speech was poorly read, besides the fact that the speech was poorly read, it was written as if this is somebody who wants to doctor the CV. I remember um, a very one guy like Bureau had come to us. He was running for public office and brought his CV to us and wanted us to turn his CV into a profile. But the CV was too short. So I told him, I said, look, my man, the other CV here, we can't turn it to a profile because <laughs> the thing that one page. The guy told me, said, you just increased the font size. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> the man... <laughs> They may want to auto, they may want to auto increase the first size to maybe 70 or 18. That way it blows up, it takes three, four pages. So so the employer, so so the employer can say the man, the man's CV is substantive. Yeah. yeah. So this is what happened today. Instead of the nation, you're talking in the state of the nation, we are talking about attending F1 meeting, March 10th to the 13th. Went to went, went to breakfast in Kenya. June 9 to the 11th, went to go June 10 to the 13th. <laughs> What's that? How does that feel? The nation the is to give, is to, is to, is to, is to, is to evaluate the pause of the nation, like giving a medical, a medical or, 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 or prognosis of the country and how you intervene in solving the problem. That's why state of the nation is, and not to cut out law failures and give mediocre things as achievement. We are, we are, it's a fraud. And I'm glad Liberian people are beginning to see through him six years later and after PR will come on day. We are the laziest president in the history of Liberia since 1847. Even Samuel Doe, an eighth grade student, was not as lazy as we are is. But let me go to PR. Come on, PR, what's, what, what's trending? Thank you. Um... And Jupal, let me, let me start with you. It is disrespectful to serious earners of doctorate degree when you refer to George Weir as President Dr. George Mane Weir. When you refer to Joe Howard Taylor as Chief Dr. Joe Howard Taylor. That's provocative, that's annoying, that's disrespectful. Exactly. The guest that is about to come on here, he holds a doctorate degree in education from the Harvard School of Education. They didn't waste it on him. They didn't confer it on him. So when he comes on and Stephen recognized, uh, recognizes him, as Dr. Sakwi Manakwa. That is because he struggled in not just any school, but a school in Harvard to be called a doctor. If these people have their people dumping tattoo, tattoo on them, don't help them to elevate it. Nobody with an honorary doctorate degree should be happy to be called Dr. This. That should tell you how unserious these gangsters are and if we are enabling them, then we are like part of the problem they're creating. So you're a young man. So I just want to appeal to you, stop calling them doctor. They are not. They are not. The people conferring the doctorate degree, the honorary doctorate degrees on we are Joy and others. They're not qualified. They don't even, they don't even offer doctorate degree at their own institutions. But yet they can own up, they can just waste their own people and call them doctor, doctor, doctor. And we should not encourage that. Honor this son in the heavens, die, come back. I can never ever refer to anybody, that's just about we are. I can never refer to anybody who carries an honorary doctorate degree at Dr. Base. Ellen Johnson Salif, I think, was giving one. You never heard anybody calling her Dr. Ellen Johnson Salif one day because she knows better and she didn't want it. 
That's my first issue. And then after you are cooling board, we have a fee for our country. It, it, what I saw you doing shows how hurt many people are about what we see in our country. And for some people, all you need is money. Sometimes you get on Facebook and you see people who want to criticize TV and they want to criticize me and other people for playing the role we're playing. The only thing you hear them say, Stephen P. Allen, they were in government, they won't come back to government and why they're supporting GMB. But that, then, then, then it's good. Because like, at least you can say Stephen Lee was here, they stole. Pia was here, he stole money, very incompetent. They want to come back to government. And that's why they're supporting GMB. That's all, if, you, if that's all you got to say about me, kudos, keep it up. Keep it up. But that, not, that is not going to dissuade us for a minute in our commitment to ensure that this one, your God, that your core president, is kicked out. It was a historical accident that led to a huge catastrophe on our nation. We got the time now to correct it, and we will correct it, no matter what you say. Get on social media, cause us. Set on uh, a regime, say what radio stations in Monrovia, cause. Do everything you want to do. The mission is on course and will not relent until this historical accident is put out of the government's infrastructure of our country. Let me say a few things, Stephen, that because I know that uh, Manakpa will soon be at the back he's supposed to be. So this is my opinion. Anybody can hold me responsible for it. Prince Colin, commonly referred to as Yana Wong, president of the Yana, Boy, Yana Boys Association for a long term. We know what has been happening behind the scene. Uh, the government has been behind him to... to to cross, he's been a, he's been a staunch unity partisan. Uh, at some point, the planter agents in the ranks and files of the Yana boss to try to remove him, they failed miserably because he's very popular and connected. And the next thing they started doing was to give him money to cross over. He resisted. And all of a sudden, we just woke up and they said, oh, car accident, the car that hit him, the car ran away. I can say from all that is reasonable enough to conclude that Prince was a part of the many victims who've been murdered under this rogue regime. Prince was assassinated and the government is behind his assassination. Monrovia, you turn left traffic, you turn red traffic, a car hits somebody, they say he ran away. He got stuck in no traffic. Nobody saw him. He just left. These tactics are known to us. Dr. Tobana Tipote, when they had a problem with the true party, with the government during the true party time, he left the country. I think he was in, where, Rhodesia or somewhere. And the matter with Loe because she'd been around for long in one of those countries. And there was an assassination attempt on Dr. Tipote. They didn't use somebody to shoot guns. They used car. The reason why you see that the people that walk the way he walks, that's the story. They tried to kill him. Using car to hit people and run away or whatever is a, is a, is a tactic of, of, of assassinating people. And because we have a killer regime in Liberia, they have not transported that to our country. So all of you who are playing hardline position, who got issues with the government, when you step out there, just be aware of your surroundings. A car could run into you. They mop all of you out. They try to grab some of you, force you into CDC, you didn't agree. The only option available to them is to kill you. They kill Prince. Prince was murdered. Prince is among the victims and the many matters that include Batanya Sua, or Vambutu, or Gifty Lamar, Abba Peters, uh, uh, Bate, yeah, just name them. Prince has been added to that list of people who have been murdered 
by the criminal regime headed by Weir. And they may look that they go free, that's what they think. But as I always say to these people, the day of accountability will come. We are a sub demon. We are, look, if I tell you what we are has done to some of the kids, which I will not say in detail now because we are not being authorized to, what he's done to the kids of some of the people he killed, how he's lured them into illicit behavior, splashing our taxpayer dialogue on them, and kids having no way of survival fell to those nonsense for somebody who killed their father. This man is a demon. If you have a demon presiding over your country, you're in trouble. And that's why we should do everything in our power to get. And that's the reason why most pastors, man, Martin, Stevie, I got no, 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 no freaking respect for most of these people. You listen to Prince Johnson on Sunday. I always tell people, for me, I don't care about the, the messenger. I pay attention to the message. Because when truth is being released somewhere, I will not close my ear to the truth because I have a problem with the messenger who is relaying the information. Prince sends a disagreement with the Uyghur regime has been consistent. On Sunday, you are seeing a church. He described, he, I mean, and this, this, this is why you should take it serious. Prince is part of the people who made Uyghur. Prince is saying what we have in Liberia, headed by Mr. Weir, is a saw regime, S-A-U-L. Revin is a pastor. Many of you, you are not pastor, but you go to church. You know who saw was. You know who King Saul was. The kind of leader he was. Prince Johnson now says he's a pastor. A little bit knowledgeable about the Bible. He says, what we have today is a sore regime. And he was giving all the reasons why this regime is a sore regime. Among some of the things he said, he supported some of the things you did for said. He said people have been killed by this regime. He gave a particular example. He said, and, and when Prince said that, I listened to him. You all know Prince yes, is a rebel. Prince is a fighter. He plays with gun. He fought the war. And he stood in a church. On the altar, I asked the people, he did a hand like that. He said, when I put a gun to my head like that, when I shoot myself, what will happen? The people say, you will die. It's the truth. When I put gun to this head and I shoot it just one time, I'll be dead. He said, but the people said, the EPS officer in Nima put a gun to her head, shot himself three times. What happened after the first time? Before he could even be able to do it for the second and the third. And then he went to the example again of, 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 of Gifty and Albert. And he basically confirmed that this government was killing people. He said all the negative things about we are. It was just this Sunday. If you got a chance, listen to the tape. And he said, what we got. I share with you. Yeah, he said it's a sore regime. And then he outlined many reasons why the regime has failed. No job, everything messed up, no security, no this. And he said all of that. Now, you can have problem with Prince Johnson. But Prince is confirming something that we all agree with, that the we are government is a disaster. It's a catastrophe. And this is my disappointment, right? Uh -huh. This is my disappointment. Let me just chip in. Yeah. You know, we have the ministry You'll pay attention in the background. Dr. Marapa is there, so what's we? Yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't be done. I was, yeah. I was. So quickly, one minute. Yeah. We, we have the Ministry of Justice. And the mandate of the Ministry of Justice is very clear. To persecute state crimes. Murder, for example, is a criminal offense. To be specific, first degree felony. Eugene Fagon was the acting minister of information when Gifted Lama and Albert Peter were murdered. He comes to us after a few months or after two years yes. and tells us, look, I was the minister of information. I had all the information about these killings, these deaths. I am telling you they were killed. In less than two weeks, a certain senator confirms what Eugene Fagon said. But the Ministry of Justice is still quiet. And I can understand why they are quiet. 
because those autopsy reports were manufactured. They were doctored. The minister was compelled to lie. Senior government officials now are disputing his lies. As a result of that, he's embarrassed. But there should be an investigation into these mysterious deaths. Prince Johnson also talked about the three missing boys. How far are we with that investigation, my people? He talked about the other guy, the other police inspector who died in Grand G there. How far are we with that investigation? How far are we even with the gun, quote unquote, cash of gun investigation? Right. They created serious commotion recently about cash of gun. How far are we? What kind of country is this? You just instill fear in the people you use belligerent tactics, Machiavellian approach to create public abroad. So you have your way. You know, we, we ain't going anywhere if we can deal with impunity. And the oh, Ministry of Justice should be held liable fully for not pursuing this specific case. Justice is required. If democracy doesn't strive, if there's no justice, we are wasting our time. The people need justice, and they will pay oh. Mr. We are the fools in nine months. Hello, Mira, please mute. Mute. Hello, Mira. Yeah, so Steve, let me just conclude so you can bring out the guests. Uh, so what I was trying to say is that all the evils being committed by this government. You see, people who are part of the government are the ones that are coming and confirming them. And we should pay attention to it, even if we have a problem with the, with the messenger. Uh, I know after that, uh, Malapa leaves, we'll be talking to some extent about the state of the union. Know, let me make my mutual disclaimer. I did not listen. I had no appetite to listen. I got taste for good speakers. I got taste for good writing. That's why when somebody like Martin Cody writes, I go and read it. That's why when somebody like Dr. Famula is speaking, if you have been speaking for five hours, I will listen. That's why I'm on the internet most of the time, pulling up speeches of Barack Obama and listening to him. I don't have appetite for a 55-year-old year man, 57-year-old man who will read like a third grader. I don't have patience for that. So on purpose and intentionally, I did not listen. I could have the little patience. You know, in the background between now to when we're fully discussing the re and see some of the lies he told. But one thing I'm sure of is the Liberia that I know and the things that are unfolding. When I list them, nobody will have interest in what we have said. And the best thing for all, all of us to do, especially when you live in Liberia, you know the country you're living in. You know what you're passing through. It does not have or require a speech from we are to tell you what the state of the nation is. Then by your own life, you know, and I'm not sure any amount of speech, what I was waiting for five, six hours, would change your perspective of what you are living in. And quickly, let me say to our people who are listening, you say you support GMB, most of you who are here, you say you support GMB. The guests we are bringing on, I'm sure some of you people had a patient to listen to all that trash, garbage in, garbage out, that we are on. You have a real doctor, in the real sense of the word doctor, a Harvard University doctorate degree holder coming to talk about the GMB you support. I always tell you, share the show. When I put you the other day, you put it all the way to a thousand. I don't know whether this show has reached thousand. If you don't reach thousand now, then I doubt your support for GMB. Because someone is coming to tell the story of GMB. Somebody like Martin Kim called it, and most of you say you follow is here. Stevie is here, and Demeter is here. I'm here. You just heard Martin saying he will cut short his hustle to pay attention to something that is most important. And if your only assignment is just to share it, and you can share up to 1,000 of this show, then you got a problem. So the challenge is yours. <laughs> and that's the back comes on. Thank you, Stevie. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I like that introduction. Let me, let me at this point uh, bring on Dr. Uh, Sekou uh, Malapai. He's, uh, he's a professor at the, uh, the University of uh, Toledo. And I like the fact that he's joining us. He will talk about the trending issue as well, uh, on what's trending, his impression about the current state of affairs of Liberia under George Weah, and, and, and how he views uh, the upcoming elections. And if he listened to the um, to what was the state of the nation, or more like a farewell speech from George Weah. So um, without much ado, let me, let me welcome Dr. Manapa. Dr. Manapa, how are you? And welcome. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for the invitation. 
Yeah, it's always a pleasure uh, seeing you. Um, and, and, and I know you've been following the conversation in the back end. Uh, you listening to uh, our panelists talk about trending national issues. Uh, what's your take on that before we go into uh, the conversation? You mean the national trend? Yeah, trending issue. What's what's trending? What what, what trending issue you want to talk about briefly? Gee, maybe we should divert the conversation to that alone. There's so <laughs> much to, to talk about. I the, know. Um, the, Professor, the, I can't see your face, and I have to see your face. There we, we go. That's better. Face? Yeah, good job. That, okay, that, when you put it that, up. That's me about formula. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to turn my, I turn my yeah, camera down. Cool. No, you okay. You, you okay, Dad. She was just saying you are bending your head. So, but once you sit up straight, you okay. Okay. Please yeah. excuse my hat. The, the, cold, the cold air is tough on my bald head. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you're too old. Um, the situation in our home country is complicated. It's pathetic in many ways. Uh, it's regrettable in many ways. I've been to Liberia several times. I went to Liberia twice last year. Um, I was there in May to June, and then I went back July to August. Uh, and I'm in frequent contact with uh, my family, and my folks, my old schoolmates, uh, my friends and colleagues. Um, I, I'm, I keep myself abreast of what's going on through the media, uh, the various pieces of media. Uh, the, my uh, my impression is my understanding is general dissatisfaction among the populace, uh, mm -hmm. general um, regret among the populace uh, as to what is going on, and you don't really need to go too far to see pieces of evidence everywhere, uh, whether it's in the street, whether you're talking about the dirt in the country in the capital, whether you're talking about the rate of uh, unemployment, uh, uh, unsolved crimes. Uh, whether you're looking at uh, schools being dilapidated and uh, the standard of education has dropped so terribly. Um, I don't want to name names, but I was uh, a visiting professor to one of our uh, very prestigious universities, for example, and I was discussing something with the students uh, one time and I, I asked them a question that I, I learned in fifth grade. And the Nobody in the class could answer it. And I said, don't say you went to college, say you went to high school, because <laughs> this is not even a college question. So the level of education has dropped. The school system is, is in, you know, in a horrible situation. Um, there's, a, you don't need to look too far. So to, to, to answer poignantly, there is general dissatisfaction general agony among our people. Um, I did not listen to all of the president's uh, message, um, but my take on that is he's giving his message, he's outlined his achievements. I think it's left with the, the people of Liberia to accept it as it is or give their reactions at the ballot box. Thank you, thank you, Doc. I thought that was a, a good uh, synopsis about um, the the state of affairs. Uh, and, and when you use the word agony, and if you if you put that into context, it, it means that uh, the nation is in a terrible, very, 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 very terrible shape. Um, um, the first question normally people will ask, and, and I'm sure a lot of Liberians out there may know you and may not. We have a very, very, very young population. I remember the last time I saw you in Liberia was at the uh, when you gave the, um, did you, did you, you were the national orator. Um, many persons don't know who Dr. Malapa is. Uh, um, so can you just briefly tell us who is Dr. Malapa? If, if, if somebody were to ask me, how do I explain? Uh, Dr. Malapa is a young man. <laughs> you should be thinking. <laughs> a very young man. <laughs> very young man. I'm from Wozi. Uh, that's uh, a small town. Uh, actually, I call it the center of my universe. Uh, it's about, uh, oh, depending on which direction you go, anywhere from 16 to 12 miles from Zaza. Um, I was born in Wozi. I went to school in Wozi for a while, and I attended the Zaza Lutheran School for three years, one year in Somokota, in, uh, which is in Fizibu, 
And I was in, in the CHG way in Bombay Hills when I lost my sight completely, dropped out of school. Three years later, I was fortunate to gain a scholarship from the late President Talbot to go to the School for the Blind in, in Freetown. I learned Braille quickly and returned to high school in Freetown. I went to Albert Academy. Mina Academy, Bobo. Yeah, um, oh yeah, you're not, you're not, you're not Freetown, Bobo. Let me know if you have a ball. <laughs> I did, I, I, I so you saw me, you saw me speak Creole well, well. Well, very well. Ah, I've been a Creole, we're not Creole, Bobo. I've been the same. Yeah, I, now you're born. Both, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I, I graduated from Albert Academy, fortunately, uh, as um, uh, the top of my class of all sighted students. I got another scholarship. I went to Florida State University in Tallahassee, Florida. I got my first degree in three years, cum laude and finished my first master's degree in one year with a 4.0 GPA. I went to Harvard University. I got my second master's degree and my doctorate from the Harvard Graduate School of Education. I landed a position here at the University of Toledo uh, as an assistant professor. I am now a tenured professor, professor with, te uh, with uh, uh, um, I'm a professor, full professor with tenure, I wanted to say full professor with tenure. I have published, I have traveled around the world. Uh, I was visiting professor to South Africa, visiting professor to Cottonton University. I presented papers in different parts of the world and certainly the United States. Um, I am blessed among all the blessings I have. I'm the father of three children. I can't say that in Liberia because I have many, many other children in Liberia, you know, our culture. <laughs> But this show is all is air in Liberia. Oh, it's okay, okay, but they, they didn't hear that. They didn't hear that. Oh yeah, I like the disclaimer. It's off record. They didn't hear that part. They didn't hear that. Yeah, part. that was off record. Exactly, exactly. Um, and and um, I uh, I love Liberia. Uh, I've served twice as the president of the Liberian Studies Association, the most professional organization on Liberian studies. Uh, I served in various Liberian organizations um, from the Lufa County Association, which I was first, first, first president, to the Zaza District Association, to the Loma Association. There are all kinds of associations. And of course, ULA, the Union of Liberian Associations in the Americas. Um, and so I'm active in my Liberian community, whether here or in Liberia. Uh, and I love to write about Liberia. I love to talk about Liberia um, because that's my home. Like I said earlier, I call Wosey, my hometown, the center of my universe. No matter where I go, that's my route. Huh. Very impressive. And that, you know, I, 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 when you talk about your, your, your education and how you, coming from a small town in, in Lofa, uh, not too far from Zozo, and, and your own rise to uh, coming to one of the best schools on, on, on the planet, um, Harvard University. It is, and, and your own ordeal um, as a young man coming up, I know the challenges at the time in, in, in Liberia and other places. It, 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 it's a story of, uh, of uh, I don't know how to describe it. You know, it's, it's a combination of uh, faith, miracle, blessings, and, 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 and dedication. And, 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 and being focused and wanting to achieve something for the best of your country. When you, when you look at your own rise and then you look at uh, the, how mediocre we've become as a country in terms of, uh, and you spoke about the education, in terms of how we select leaders, in terms of uh, the people we, we put into position of trust to control our, 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 our governance structure, the, uh, those who we rely on in terms of national governance, uh, our public bureaucracy, the quality of people in our public bureaucracy, and all of that. And then you being a, a friend to um, former Vice President JMB, uh, Ambassador Buaka, um, draw for us, draw for us what, what that kind of leadership that Ambassador Buaka brings to, the, to our politics that you think has been missing in Liberia? Let, let me first say that um, VP Bokai traditionally is my uncle. <laughs> um, he's Kisi and I'm Loma. 
all Lomas and Bandis and Pelas and Madingos are nephews and nieces to the Kisses. But that relationship is particularly strong when you talk about the Kisi Loma relationship. Anywhere a Loma man sees a Kisi man, you'll call him uncle. Anywhere a Kisi man sees a Loma man, you'll call him nephew. Anywhere a Loma woman or Loma man sees a Kisi woman, he or she will call her auntie. It's not a relationship to play with because it's blood related. Uh, the Loma ethnic group was founded by uh, a man named Fali, uh, Faluubo, and he was the son of a Kisi woman. And that's why, uh, Akumba, that's why the Kisis are our uncles. It's not a relationship to play with. That's the first thing. Um, but that relationship has nothing to do with the truth as to who I think and I know uh, Vice President Borkai to be. I've done the biography of this man entitled From Foya to the Capital, biography of His Excellency Vice President Joseph Borkai, Joseph N. Borkai. To do that work, I not only spoke with him, and his wife very lengthily, but I went all over the country. I spoke with his former schoolmates from CWA. I went to Bummy Hills where he grew up. I spoke with people that went to school with him in elementary school, elementary school. I went to Foya. I went to his hometown, Wasonga. I spoke not, not only with his relatives, but I spoke with people who grew up with him. I spoke with people who were against him and still praised him. I spoke with people who worked with him, who worked for him. I spoke by phone to people on four continents. So I did a thorough research, that's what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. to find out not only my own impression of GNB, but the impression of others. Um, I have many examples, but I'll give you a very good one. There was a Lebanese man who tried to bribe him in Liberia when he was Minister of Agriculture. Uh, there was a, um, a grant that was uh, to be given to a Liberian or somebody with uh, a business in Liberia with roots in Liberia, blah, blah, blah. And this Lebanese man wanted that grant, but he didn't really qualify. And so Jen B said, no, he can't get it. He cannot get the, the grant. He can't get a contract. Two or three other people, including one Liberian, tried to bribe Jen B. It didn't work. This Lebanese man became so impressed with this man. Even though he didn't get a contract, he knew he didn't deserve it. So to this day, the man is one of the greatest admirers of GNB. I interviewed him for the oh. book. That's how I know. He lives not too far from where I live. I live in Toledo, Ohio. He lives in Dearborn, Michigan, which is part of Detroit. Mm -hmm. So I know he knows who this man is. He said to me in my interview with him, if we had two or three people like, like uh, Bokai in Liberia, it would be a much better country. He's a good man. This is the man who lost the contract because GMB was so strict. He is not just somebody who is, you know, two by four administrator. Uh, in my book, I outlined several qualities of this man. Anything from an even temper to one who has an incredible sense of humor. Many people don't know that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He has an incredible, I've sat with him at his house and he, he would crack one from one joke to the talk other. To the next. Every yes. minute you'll talk something. But he has to know you. He has to be comfortable with you. Otherwise, you and he can sit in a room for two hours. He may say two words. 
anywhere from a sense of humor to even temperness to his incredible honesty to his incredible leadership ability. You know, he served in several major leadership positions in Liberia, from being the uh, regional supervisor for the Liberian Produce Marketing Corporation, LPMC, to the first Liberian to be appointed the managing director of that corporation, to Minister of Agriculture, to the director of LPRC. He served in different positions, major positions. I interviewed people from all of those agencies with whom he worked. And not one person, not one person had anything negative to say about him in terms of his honesty, in terms of his dedication to his, to his, to his duty, in terms of his love for his country. But above all, not one person who tell me that man is corrupt. Hmm. Not one. This is the man who tells me he does not save one penny outside of Liberia. He saves all his money in Liberia. How many ministers in Africa, in general, Liberia in particular, or people in high positions can say that, let alone the vice president? He said, we have enough here. We can fix our own country. Um, several people from LPRC and LPMC and the Ministry of Agriculture told me, you could go to JMB's office in the morning and his desk is full of Papers, people bringing this requirement, this demand, this request, that request. You go back in the afternoon, all of those people's gone. He had attended to each one of them. He loves people. He addresses people as if that person is the only person in the whole world. Um, he says to me, and, and I've got this in the book, if you want to know the importance of the janitor, go to the bathroom and there's no toilet tissue there. Then you will know, oh, no janitor here? No, you didn't know the, you didn't know the importance of that janitor you went to, until you went to the bathroom. So each person is as important as the other, regardless of their positions, regardless of their um, height, their weight, their bank books. That doesn't matter to GMB. The, in terms of leadership for the country, two Huge things stand up. His love for his country. You should read some of the poems. He, 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 people don't know that he's a poet. He's written beautiful poems about Liberia. If you read some of those poems, you will see the love he has for his country. Two, maybe more than two, his disdain for corruption and his ability to push people to perform better because he sets high expectations for others and he not only sets those expectations, he displays what he expects of you. That's what many people that I interviewed said they admired about him. He is a man of integrity. And I have lots of people, citations of quotes from people, people from Ghana, people from uh, Liberia. Uh, like I say, I interviewed people on four continents about him, from Asia to Europe, all over Europe, to, of course, North America, you know, Australia. I interview people from all over the place hmm. about him. And the message was consistent. The message was consistent. He's very even-handed. He's very honest. He's very devoted to his country. He's very uh, much against corruption. He sets examples for people. He, so all of this book cannot, cannot lie on one person. Or, 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 all of this book cannot be sacrificed. I mean, some of this book, one man I interviewed in Seoul, Korea, extremely rich man, he's not looking for a job from GMB. He's not looking for favors, but he respects the man incredibly because of his devotion to his country, because of his sense of honesty, because of his level of integrity. This is the man we're dealing with. I don't support GMB because I'm looking for a job. I don't support GMB because I, 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 I want you know, uh, 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 his favors. I support him because I know his level of integrity. 
I know his level of dedication to his country. And I know his disdain for corruption. Something that he not only demonstrates, but he will expect of anybody who works for him. He is not a God who's going to wave a, mag a magic wand and you know everything for Liberia turns into a day. But I assure you, he's a man given the opportunity to become president who will make incredible changes for the better for the country because he believes he's destined to do that. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Malapa. I, 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 a very, very strong, very strong war. Uh, you, remind me, you know, when, when, when you read history, and, and then I'll go to our panel, Mr. Asher, I just want to say this. Uh, Martin Luther King, when he was uh, called up to give a speech and his friend, Raf Abinati was called to introduce him. And when Raf Abinati got through introducing Dr. King, uh, one of the first things Dr. King said, uh, he said, when I listened to Raf uh, talk about, introduce me and say all these wonderful things, I wonder who was he talking about? You know, that's how much <laughs> incredible he thing. But it's good to have a friend. Said, when he was introduced, he said um, he felt like an old maid. Yeah. He went to work one day and her <laughs> boss said, and I hear you're getting married. And she looked at <laughs> you and said, no, I'm not, but thank God for the rumor. <laughs> <laughs> so let me, let me go to you, Martin. Martin, you, you, you up next. Let me go to you, Martin. Yeah, um, Stevens, quite frankly, I listened to the da, you know, and my first time listening to him, though, and my first time seeing him, his thoughts are really, really impressive, inspiring, and scintillating. I sat back, and he kept flowing, you know, about who... JMB is. Uh, perhaps he could make a better spokesperson for JMB's campaign. <laughs> because the thing is, he gets at the very root of JMB's truest characteristics. Listening to him talking about the number of people he's interviewed across continents, not countries, but continents. And, 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 and quite frankly, one key observation is the quality of his, his thought convinces anyone about his doctorate degree. <laughs> you know, I, I, I sat by the quality, the quality of his thoughts convinces anyone about his doctorate degree. You don't need to ask whether he has a doctorate degree. Real doctor. I'm doctor. telling you. Enter me. I I listened to the other doctor, the quote unquote doctor, he's talking about with the power in post instead of repost. Can you imagine? <laughs> the country is in trouble. And 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 I guess Dr. Dr. Marakpa knows about the ongoing work of the CACC. I, I, I would like to extend an olive branch to him with his experience and expertise, his qualification, I think it is about time that all of us focus on weeding out fake credentialists. The other day I was on this show, Stephen, and, and I recommended one important thing, the need to establish three codes in Liberia. The war crimes code is of essence, to our collective progress. The economic crimes court is also of importance to our collective well-being. And the academic crimes court. We need those three courts, right? Say if JMB becomes the next president, and I trust, I listened to one of the ministers talking about I was opposed. You know, I opposed JMB in 2017. I didn't oppose JMB. I supported JMB against George Weir. Probably they don't know the history. <laughs> I will support JMB any day against a George Weir. There is no debate about that. No argument about that. George Weir is a fraud. A fraud of historical proportions. There is no argument about that. How can a George Weir even lead a community as chairman? Let alone president of a country. 
That's is that's a that that's an accident, historical accident. <laughs> a man who could not even manage his own business to even manage King's FM. Why is King as King King's FM today? He brought Cloud TV. Where is Cloud TV? The ultimate interest of Mr. Weir is to loot. He did not come to lead. He came to loot. He did not come to serve. He came to steal. The pieces of evidence are preponderant. Nobody needs to tell you that the government is a rogue regime. And I like the fact that an esteemed scholar and academic from Harvard University has laid down a very strong premise about the identity of another statesman called Joseph Yuman Buaka. And very soon we'll open up the debate. Then we'll defend our side. I'm an activist. However, I have interest in the national politics. I can say down here a man like George Weah gets another six years at the expense of our people. We will be in route to dystopia. If you give George Weah another six years, the country is damaged totally. So I can say here because I am an activist and I fold my hands and say, oh, I'm an activist and I'm supposed to, <laughs> I'm not supposed to identify the contradictions. No, my duty is to identify the contradictions and tell the Liberian people, look, this sir is the worst. Considering this sir who lead you to this end. So do not because the downside of re-electing we are is costly. It's very costly. In less than six years, Stevens, look at the country. Nobody wants to do business with the country. Even our international friends are running away from us because of the quality of leaders we have. And I like a very key trait that Dr. Marakwa mentioned about JMB. His urge, his anxiety, his passion to fight corruption. And corruption has been our greatest evil, our greatest nightmare in that country. We've killed a number of presidents as a result of corruption. And corruption continues to eat up every fabric of our country. It is because of corruption our health system is in, is in ruins. It is because of corruption our education system is messy. It is because of corruption our young sisters are in the street in search of survival. It is because of corruption incidents of rape sexual gender-based violence. These things are on the increase. If we don't deal with corruption from the very root, the country goes nowhere. Corruption, the fight against corruption, it is not just about establishing the LACC, establishing RAA, FIU. It is not just about establishing the GSC, Good Governance Commission. No. The fight against corruption begins with political will. This president that's in power lacks the political will. In fact, he is an epitome of corruption. A man who comes to power breaks down almost all his properties, begins to build new ones in less than six months. He even refused to declare his assets, which is in accordance with section 10.2 of the 2014 Code of Conduct Law. He has violated almost all the laws, including the very constitution he took oath to protect. Can this be a president of unknown dignity and respectability, Stevie? Liberians need to press the reset button on governance. Any attempt to go otherwise, like I said, we are in route to dystopia. We are in route to hell. The country will sink in hell. We are almost in hell. But the question is, can we redeem ourselves? Can we save our country? Can we salvage the next generation? My response to these questions is yes. October 2023 is a defining moment. And I want to speak to our people across the country. Some of us escaped that country midnight, even whilst in exile. I am still fighting along with the people because the people are suffering. So I can't say, okay, because I'm in SI, everything is okay. No, 
What about our people back home? We have to get them out of the situation they are in. Look at the thing that men did recently, Stephen, for example. This man promised West Point. Let's use West Point as a case study, right? To even disqualify his so-called quote-unquote state of the nation address. We can disqualify it right from the West Point situation or scenario. The man promised West Point five things. Number one, he said he was going to build 2,000 housing units for West Pointers. Number two, youth center. Number three, rehabilitation center. Number four, coastal defense system. Number five, he said he was going to create um, 25,000 jobs. As a result of those premises, the people of West Point gave him 98.9% of their votes. Five years down the road, Stevens, this man who got 98.9% of our people's votes in West Point gave them a free time ball bag yard fee. And he's boasting about giving them a free time ball bag yard fee with that cheap carpet. I checked on the website of Alibaba. You know how much for one 100 meter of that carpet? 11, $11 US it, on the website. Now I publish it. And the guys were discussing it yesterday in West Point. They said, oh, but the carpet, the man said he bought at 11 hours. <laughs> so people gave you 98.8% of that vote. You get an 11 hours carpet and you run it all around. So where are the 4,000 housing units? Where is the youth center? Where is the rehabilitation center? Where is the coastal defense system? The same way they were the sisters in Nigerian teachers and the, and the twin city on Bali Island along the coastal highway. Why lie to our people? The bottom Thank line you. is why lie. Nobody there, but... <laughs> As we transition to the state of the nation address, I have some intriguing thoughts to share. Yeah, but yeah, let well, me give well, other panelists the chance to Malapa. also share their thoughts yeah. on that. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And that was a good point you raised. And I and, and let me let me let me get into Miata and uh and and uh Revin to, to ask Dr. Marapa question so that um we can we can into Miata go then uh Doctor, let me then uh, pass the mode and to pour them peer. And then, Yata, you muted. Good evening, Professor. I am so honored to be on this program with you. And, you. you know, just to get an opportunity to hear your mind, your thoughts, and so forth. When I was told that. Uh, you were coming on the program today. I went and dug in my cupboard and found your book. Signed, autographed, and sealed by His Excellency Joseph Boyka. So I said, Miata, now you got to read the book. The man is coming on so you will know <laughs> what he said. And I have, I have not finished it. I'm almost finished, but I have to tell you, thank you so very, very much. And I would like to ask the panelists to give me maybe three minutes sure. before, before I put my question to Professor. When I picked up this book to read it, page one, page two, blah, blah, blah. I came to a foreword. The foreword of this book, the biography of Joseph Boyka, was written by Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. Hmm. And I want to read it. Mm -hmm. It's not very long. It is incontrovertible that happiness and success at home depend on a loving and close-knit family. Similarly, success in the workplace depends on strong, genuine, and effective work relationships. Success is assured when such relationships are deeply rooted in integrity, effective communication, mutual respect, and selfless determination to accomplish goals and objectives regardless of who claimed credit. I selected Honorable Joseph Boyka as my running mate because of these shared values. 
We are thankful that the people of Liberia believed in us and voted for us to lead the nation. When we took over, the economy of the nation was in tatters, infrastructure destroyed, institutions dysfunctional, and worse. People displaced, disunited, and devastated. Under these difficult circumstances, VP Boyka proved to be a pillar of strength. I'm therefore pleased that Professor Sakyu Malakpa has chosen to cover the VP's life, history, and his contribution to Liberia, Africa, and humanity in general. Joe, as I find, as I fondly call him, is a quiet and easygoing person. This is sometimes misunderstood, but those who work and interact with him are sure to acknowledge and benefit from his vast knowledge and experience, which has made him effective as a vice president. I therefore could not agree more with Professor Malaka when he wrote, yes, Joe Boyka stood for his right and still does so, but in a different way, a way often misunderstood. He can disagree without being boisterous. He can make his point strongly and forcibly without being rambunctious. He can advocate strongly and diligently without yelling or being rancorous. He can negotiate firmly and fearlessly, but always in faith and fairness. He is easy and easygoing, but never an easy pullover. He listens quietly and intently, but such should never be misinterpreted as inatt inattentiveness and certainly not a lack of understanding. He is diligent and always deeply concerned about others, but never deceptive. Moreover, he can accomplish a lot with his de deep sense of humor, one of his hidden qualities many do not know. On the other hand, although he jokes and laughs, his jocularity should never be misconstrued for weakness. This is precisely the VP Boyka I know and have been pleased to work, to work with. VP Boyka is a role model, one who pulled himself up by his bootstraps. Through twists and turns, he went for Wasonga, a small village in Foyer district, Lofa County to the prestigious College of West Africa, our alma mater, and eventually to the University of Liberia. Throughout his school days and in both his public and private lives, he has personified respect, honor, and integrity. In chapter seven to nine, Professor Malakai presents characteristics of the VP from the lenses of others who worked with him in various places. These characteristics clearly set him apart as the role model to emulate, particularly for the young people of Liberia. To sum up, I have been blessed with the Vice President Boyka, who continues to work amicably and assiduously with me. And I applaud him for, his, for serving his nation and his God during very difficult circumstances. Finally, I thank Professor Malakai for undertaking this world well-deserved project. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, President hmm. of the Republic of Liberia. And when I read that wow, I can only say wow, 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 three times wow. When I read the forward, Written in 2016. Professor, how did you feel in 2017 with the change of dynamics that we went through? What do you think happened? Or... Well, it was, it was a difficult pill to swallow to know that this man that I have come to know and love and admire beyond description did not become our next president. 
One of the things I didn't touch in my introductory remark was I talk about his role as an administrator, uh, but I didn't touch on his family background, how he grew up from, from a small village, uh, his closeness to his mother, how he went to school in Sierra Leone, how he battled ants for a piece of peanut, how he endured hunger and beating. Um, all of those things molded him into what he became. And some of the events that got him to be so honest, to this day, um, I knew he was prepared, more than prepared, to spearhead our, our nation to, uh, as Talbot used to say, to higher heights. So it was, it was a chilling effect to know that this man, um, did not become our next president. Um, in Loma, we say, which means it just tilted. It has not wasted. We still have time to straighten that part so that we can get the soup we need and deserve. Again, as we look at the prevailing circumstances, we have no choice, like the previous speaker said, but to fight in all, every way we can. I also then mentioned that while at the University of Toledo, I went back to school and earned a law degree. And so I look at the, the prevailing situation again from a legal perspective and how some of the things that happen in the country make us a, a laughing stock. A, a, a lamentable situation on the world scene and even within our own borders. The murders have taken place without investigation. A lot of legal irregularities. This is the only country that I know where a sitting justice of the Supreme Court was removed. How can you explain that? Friends come to me and say, this happened in your country? I almost want to say, no, that's not my country. That I'm from Sierra Leone. <laughs> but, but, but this is my country. This is my home. This is where I was born. This is the pride of my whole being. So my friends, we have to buckle up and do the best we can to ensure that this land of liberty of which we are all so proud, regains its place on the international scene among the Committee of Nations. J.N. Bokai has the ability, he has the will, he has the, he has the vision, he has the push, he has the temerity to lead us in that direction. I don't speak out of envy of other people. I don't speak out of hatred. I speak out of the interest of my nation. Uh, I speak out of love for my country and for my people. I speak out of sadness for what, what they are going through undeservedly. I speak out of regret for what would have been but it's not. Stephen. Yeah. yeah. Go on. yeah. Uh, I know you said after me that that really, but I just want to tap into. Oh, go I just I just want to tap into Miata's question. I I, I listened to the prof's answer. Uh, even though Miata has not said what are the uh whether her question was answered the way she anticipated but because you read the forward and our forward talk a lot about former president Selif's thought of Buaka as explained in the forward the kind of person she thought that Buaka was and then in 2017 with having witnessed what characterized the steps leading towards the election 
the perceived real, imaginary, or whatever the differences were said to be between President Sally and the vice president that she spoke about so fondly in the forward and all the holy battle about whether she supported him, she didn't support that. I show you from that background that Ente Miata said this was in 2016, and then we came to 2017. So what happened? So my take is the question she was asking, what changed about all of these beautiful things said in the forward compared to what actually took place in 2017 towards the election? Probably, I think, in my little understanding, that was Miata's question, if you have a touch. Um, I, I would rather not touch that because um, there is another work in, in the making that would address some of those things. And I don't want to preempt by getting into that particular situation as to what happened, what did not happen. Um, but uh, I do know for a fact, talking with VP, the former VP, that there were numerous occasions where the former, for the former president uh, indicated that uh, she wanted the VP to uh, replace her. Uh, that's, a, that's a fact. Where the change came in after those uh, uh, proclamations, uh, could say uh, is another work uh, in the, in progress. Um, I'm not the author of that one, and I'm not going to say who's the author. But uh, it's uh, I'm working with the project, and uh, rather not say. Okay, Stephen. So that was tapping into Miata. Let me let me ask my own question, <laughs> and I. Uh, and, 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 and then I get convinced that indeed we are dealing with a, a Harvard trained doctorate degree holder and not, not doctor, doctor, whatever uh, Jupo will call them. So, but, but I, 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 I support uh, Vice President Boaka on compromising it. And those who know the history, they are aware that even when I was press secretary to President Salif, and all that was happening around the time of the elections, whether real, imaginary, or whatever it was, about some conflict between the vice president or President Sully, whether it was real, whether it was perceived, I was on bending, even as a sitting press secretary to President Sully, with regards to my support for GMB. And I still do so today. But I do so based on the things I know. Uh, which may not be enough compared to somebody like you who have written an entire book for the man called Joseph Boaka. But we have had different engagements with people. And one thing some of his detractors have said, which I want to put to you, some say uh, he, 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 some say he is a kind of Travel person pays attention to travel interest. I have always argued I don't see that. Some say he's he, he's vindictive and 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 they say that's part of the reason why some people who obviously knew that he was the best person to lead the country would choose to sacrifice the entire country and vote for an empty shell just on the kind of those kinds of perception about the VP. You know him. You've written about him. What do you have to say about those perceptions that probably those who don't like him are spinning around all over the place? Tribalistic is not. If, 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 if VP Boaka were to vote against any group, it would be against the Kisses. Because quite frankly, he, he, one of, one of his, his uh, largest set of opponents come from FOIA. You will not believe that. He was to have become the vice president to Doe instead of Moniba. But his own people went to Doe and said, this man was not born here. He's, he was, he's a Sierra Leone and he was born in Sierra Leone. That's how uh, Otto uh, went to Doe and said, um, I have somebody else from Lufa, not Bokai. So that would not make him to, in, to be 
only in favor of the KC people. He's done a lot for for your, for your, for your district, no doubt about that. But tribalistic is not. You look at his staff, for example. You see people from all walks, all ethnic groups in Liberia. You look at the people he has assisted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm not I'm not quoting all that, but you're right. His chief of staff, who was the highest person in that office, was from the southeast, same street queer. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, about yes, from, from, from the southeast. The 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 uh the, the other guy, um uh Tunis. Tunis is, is from the southeast. You look at his staff, you look at his office, uh, office staff, you look at the people who work with him, whom he has chosen. You know that he's not. First of all, this man is Kisi. He speaks Mende fluently because he lived in Kenema. He grew up in uh, uh, Bami Hills. So he speaks Gola. His wife is Gola. Um, most of his interactions are with people of the uh, American Liberian, if, uh, if that's the term we want to use, background. He went to CWA. But most of the, the, the people, his, his classmates there were, were from the southeast or from parts of Monterrado. That is his upbringing. In terms of being vindictive, um, he himself told me he does not have a single bone of vindictive in him. And, and that was corroborated by people I interviewed. For example, um, his own Lofa man, uh, his own Lofa nephew, Colonel Colley, um, set him up in so many ways that um, he eventually said that VP Borkai stole $1.4 million and was running away to go to, to Guinea with this money. You mean you mean Abraham Colley of the PRC? No, 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 James, Colonel James Colley. Oh, okay, okay. No, not Abraham Colley, Colonel James Colley. Um, when the when the when the when the coup took place, they sent some military leaders to Lofa, and James Coley was one of them. James Coley wanted to transfer uh, uh, Bokai from the LPMC position in Lofa to Monrovia, and um, uh, 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 Bokai traveled to Monrovia and told the colonel, "Look, uh, this is a little urgent, you know, uh, for, for me to." And the colonel took that word urgent as an insult. Um, it's a long story. If you read the book, you you, you, will see, you see the whole episode there. But what I'm saying here is, even with that, to this day, he, this is the man who keeps very good, very good record. He has a, a copies of all the communities. I went through some of these, 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 these documents, the communication between him and Colonel Colley and uh, how Colonel Colley turned him over. Um, Colonel Colley had people set up to handcuff him and take his picture and da 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 he went to the mansion to 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 see the head of state ado uh, and while there uh charles tiller showed up and said Baka, what are you doing here charles tiller was director of gsa and he said this is this is the allegation against me this man is my deputy and his brother charles tiller said how can the man the man's deputy bring a charge against him and he's never investigated Eventually, that's how uh, Collie was proven to be wrong. And when Collie was proven to be wrong, the next charge was uh, Bokas to $1.4 million. So there was, that's a great out for his arrest. On and on and on. The point I'm trying to make is this. He could have had a strong hatred against all these people who uh, lied on him. He did not. Um, he, he was fired. Uh, for, from the position of, of, of Minister of Agriculture because they said he gave uh, rights freely when he was the director for LPMC, which was not true. He, when, when he became a uh, director, he, he set up a committee to investigate those, those situations. When he brought in lawyers, uh, uh, um, one of them, uh, what's his name? Oh gosh, the gentleman at the ECOWAS court, um, Wilson. Right. Wilkins right. Wilkins, Wilkins right. Wilkins right. Wilkins right. Was was one of the persons he brought in um, to to investigate such allegations. So again, they lied on him. 
And, in, and instead of being bitter, he wrote a nice letter to do, thanking him for the opportunity he had to serve his country. And since he got fired as, as, as uh, Minister of, of Agriculture, he didn't have a job for more than 12, 13 years. He never complained. He came, he came to uh, the United States and uh, he went from there to, to try, wanted to do some work in Ghana that didn't work out. He went back until the interim position came, came out and so he appointed him as director of LPRC. And he did that for nine months. He straightened up the place. And so I said, when, when I told you to go to LPRC, the purpose was for you to, to straighten the place and you've done that. Thank you very much. Now you can go back and I'll find somebody else. He said, thank you, um, Mr. Acting President. I will go back. He set up his own corporation called Lusu Corporation after his mother. Like I said, I didn't get into that because he and his mother were very, very, very close. Um, he came up from a very difficult background and rose literally educated himself. He went to see the BA as a janitor. Okay. He wrote from being janitor to a bookkeeper and then he started selling uniforms. That's when he knew the Salif children because he was there when those children were going to school there. Uh, I'm talking about Ellen Justice Salif. So, no. To conclude, this is not a man who's vindictive. This is not a man who is tribalistic. This is a man who loves our, our, our African tradition. Uh, this is a man who loves education. Uh, he and I have talked about that and you know how people misuse words like uh, the people, some don't, the, the, the different between, the last time I was in the video, we were laughing about that. Uh, people don't know the difference between L-O-S-S, L-O-S-E, and L-O-O-S-E. Um, many people don't know the, the distinctions among those, those, those three words. Um, we talk about those kinds of things. This is not somebody who's who's tribalistic at all. Not that not that I know of. He is not an angel. He is not a god like any other human being. He has his faults and limitations, but he's not tribalistic. He's not vindictive. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pastor Mo. <clears throat> Doc, um, good evening. And uh, it's an honor to share this platform with you. Sitting Thank back you. here, listening to you, your upbringing, going to school, struggle you went through to be where you are today, you took my mind back in the days in Liberia, growing up as a lad all around us, the only thing we could see from our bigger brothers, everybody wanted to go to school and get a degree to, to get a job. Just to name a few of them, one of them happens to be Lincoln Brandel, one of them happened to be Reverend Dr. Momolu Dix, you know, and uh, 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 Quine Andrews. Those were the, the, the guys that I grew up around. And all they could do is study, go to school, try to earn their degree to work in government. Today, our government or our nation is facing a serious problem. I mean, I listen to all the good things about JMB. I don't want to dwell on JMB because what Andy Miata read, I will need a copy of that book. But my saying has to do with the Liberia today and the Liberians that we have today. We have a leadership in power. Corruption is the order of the day. No more integrity, people doing anything, no more justice. And I know that's not a kind of Liberia that you grew up in. And what is your word? You know, I don't want to get emotional because it hurt me day and night for the way our country is going. And many people don't see it. 
But God bless some of us to be here where we are today. It is because we were brought up in a home where we saw lights, where we used flush toilet, where Texas could drop us in front of our doors. That's how we were brought up. We were able to use one cent, two cent. But we're looking at our nation today where integrity is no more. What is your advice to those that listen to you by way of radio, to those that are watching on Facebook? What can you tell those parents that are struggling or trying to find means to educate their children? Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. I appreciate the question. Um, I like to present a quote by JNB himself in response to your question. And I've used this quote in several of my writings. He says, politician thinks about the next election. The statesman thinks about the next generation. Very powerful words. The state of our nation today is lamentable in many ways. And your question about the next generation couldn't be more strong. For those who are listening to parents and even the young, the young people, the older people, whoever we are as Liberians, um, we need to be truthful to ourselves in a sense that because XYZ has given me a small position, that means I can never say the truth about him or her. Because my, my older brother has a position and I'm benefiting from that, benefiting from that, I can't say anything about XYZ. We all need jobs. We all need a means of survival. Uh, like we say, you can't bite the, the hand that feeds you. We all understand those cliches. But we must remember that this battle is not just for us. It is for us today. But today is gone. It's for our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, some yet unborn if we do not choose the right path, we take one foot backward and three feet backwards. We take one foot forward and three feet backwards. It's not going to help us. Like I said earlier, some things I learned in fifth grade. College students couldn't answer the question to that same situation. It saddened me. It's not because I'm smarter. It's because I had great teachers. I had great opportunities. I had good, good learning at atmosphere. And I look, that's why I look at the people I want to school with and see how many of us have made it in one way or the other. Because we had the opportunity that the, the country provided, that our church schools provided, our parents, some many of us from parents who didn't who could not read and write, who could not even speak English. But they encouraged us to go to school, to learn, to become somebody. Today, we as Liberians should not only look at today. We need to provide the atmosphere. We need to provide the opportunities for our children and our great-grandchildren. We can make that change with a single vote. Don't ever think your vote is insignificant or does not count. Each vote counts tremendously. Let's not only look at the people in position whose own, only concern is the, the fanfare of the position. The sirens blowing, the crowds clapping, the horns blowing. Leadership is far more than that. Leadership is one who can 
administer the country, who can lead with by examples. Leadership is about setting examples. It's about perspicacity. That means being able to look into the future and think, what does my country need? Leadership is about people's concern to leave a legacy. When I go tomorrow, what legacy would I have left behind? Is it the big cars that I ride? The many houses that I build? Is that my legacy? Leadership is about concern for each individual. When I was in graduate school in Cambridge, um, one of my professors wrote that if a country cannot build its human resources, it can build anything else. Not a fine market, not even grid roads, nothing. Our greatest resource are our human resources, our children, our educational system, our health system. Those things that make human beings what and who they are and should be. Not people roaming the streets as the only means of survival. Not people who have no ambition because they have no role models, no examples. Not people who, who think that the, the best thing I can do is to stay and, and snap to people's telephones or watches or whatever, and, and that's my means of survival. Education, my friends, is the road to the future. Education is the basis for nation building. Education is the basis for democratic systems. Education is the basis for building consciousness and conscientiousness. Education is the basis for growth and development. Somebody wrote a book, that, that Clower wrote a book about Liberia called Growth Without Development. Yes, you can have growth. Increase in this, increase in that, but no development. The process of self-development, human resource development, infrastructure development. Education is the process that, that instills in people the sense of integrity. Education is not only book learning. Let me make that clear. Literacy and, 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 and numeracy are very important parts of education, but they are not the only parts of education. Our market women are highly educated. They get into SUSU. They get into a banking system to ensure that they accumulate. You, you want to tell them those people are not educated? Of course they are. How can we encourage such systems to ensure that everybody does not rely on the government? How can we ensure that the government is not the only employer? that you need to empower people through the economic and social systems? How can we ensure that tomorrow's future rests on the arms of people who care for this country? Gen B is one person, not the only person, is one person who can lead us in that direction I'm not saying he'll, pro he'll provide every solution. He will not be a panacea. Like I said earlier, he does not have a magic wand to wave it and all our troubles go away. That's not going to happen. Uh, with JNB to become president, there'll be a lot of expectation. Okay, here the man, now let's see what he will do in two months. He can be there for six months or 12 months for 12 years. He's not going to solve all of the problems. I guarantee you that. But believe me, he will go a long ways in changing us to where we need to be and where we should be. It is incumbent upon you, their mothers and fathers, uncles and aunts, big brothers and big sisters, to think not only of today, but tomorrow, and to, for the person who can lead us in that direction. Don't throw away your votes because somebody promises you a cup of rice, a bag of rice. Don't throw away your vote because somebody says, um, I'll do this or I'll do that. You know, somebody said, um, a second grader asked her teacher one day, said, 
Do all fairy tales begin with once upon a time? The teacher said, yes, they used to. Now they begin with if I'm elected. <laughs> That's the fairy tale. Don't listen to fairy tale tellers. Listen to your heart, listen to your conscience, and look at your future. Powerful words. GNB. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. Uh, Jupal, you got a question? Uh, well, I don't I don't really have a question. Just want to say being with uh, Doctor on the program tonight is a privilege. And I'm deeply honored and I'm touched by all of uh, the words uttered tonight. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. <laughs> so that, yeah, that, 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 that is a, it's a young man, still a high school student. Uh, he's, in, he's in Bunk County with the uh, community radio station. Uh, and he's been joining us of late. And, and, and I'm sure just that brief comment he made will give you a, a kind of impression about who he is. We're proud of him. He's smart. We are happy to develop him. Uh, he's a very smart, smart, smart young man that we're proud of. And I'm sure just a few seconds of comments he made uh, will gather some kind of impression yourself. Definitely. Uh, Stevie, can I ask a question to the dad? My man, you not tell your time. Oh, moving forward. Hey, man, Stevie. My man, we can see you. You will come on. We can see you, my man. Martin doing research. <laughs> can, can, can I ask the doc a question? So, so, so doc, after Martin? this question, because we've got you here over an hour, we don't want to take up much. After this question from Doc, can you, you know, just uh, from Martin, I mean, uh, Doc will just conclude and then uh, we can, uh, 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 um, you know, uh, thank him for his time here with us. And, and I hope you will not be a stranger. I know I'll bring you back here as we go into towards the elections, uh, as we get closer towards the elections, I want to bring you back here on many days. And if you have the time, just uh, let me know. We can bring you here as, well, as a guest panelist to talk about some of the, um, uh, to talk about some of the trending national issues. But let Martin go ahead then. Martin, Anytime. 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 And Martin after your question, <laughs> also your question, please, please talk a little bit about what you asked Dr. John. You talk about your commission. I'm not sure he cleared over you are talking yeah, about. Yeah, you know what it is. Yeah, so you yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, Veteran Pierre. I like the fact that you you had to re-emphasize that. So um, before I ask my question, Dad, we we are actually uh, running this organization. It is called CACC, Campinas for Academic Crimes Code in Liberia. And our mandate is to promote academic integrity, fair competition, excellence, and public service productivity through quality education. So we've exposed dozens and dozens of academic thrusters across the public service and the private service, as well as across universities and high schools. Liberia has become a floor gate of academic fraud. Because of this, we are more interested in the merit-based system. You know, when you anti-meta, Dr. Fambule, Dr. Tipote, Dr. Dew Mason, and, and all of the bright minds, including Dr. Yan, uh, Dr. Alari Tukwa, when all of you were active during those days, education was of quality and not quantity. For example, in economics, education is an inelastic commodity. It means education has no substitute. Therefore, we should always place emphasis on quality. Quality, I repeat. So we've launched this campaign in lieu of an all-out war on academic fraud in the country. Because we've noticed that the reason why we are not going anywhere is because we've got people in technical positions who are not just qualified and competent. They fake their degrees, their credentials. So we've asked you as an experienced educator, one who has vast knowledge, an expert 
in fact, to join us. This is a nine-man panel, Campinos for Academic Crime School. We've exposed even the vice president. She has a fake master's degree in banking and finance. We wrote the school and the school confirmed. <laughs> the die is laughing. <laughs> We've exposed the speaker of the house. He has Buff fake master's and doctorate degree in criminal yeah, justice. Buffett Timbers. Yeah, yeah I, I read that article. Yes. Okay, thank God you've been following. <laughs> uh -huh. We've exposed the Senate pro tem. He lied about having master's of science in petroleum geology. That's a lie. We've exposed dozens of them, including Representative Ellis Grant. Look at the latest situation with LBDR CEO, Dio Dalani. We've exposed a right. lot of them. Yeah, so I will appeal to you that we don't know anything, right? You know it or We are not expert in anything. We are kindly asking you to help us because we are at the stage of petitioning the legislature. We are at the stage of petitioning the legislature so that we establish an academic crime school in the country. Because academic fraud has become the new normal. You know, people are taking advantage of the system. There is no quality assurance. There is no due diligence. Even at the le level of the legislature, the president appoints political nominees and they are not vetted. They are not verified. Their credentials are not verified or scrutinized. So uh, this is an appeal to you. You can think about it. But my question to you is, uh, on a JMB government, because for me, I'm more interested in the interest of the people, what the people get as a result of voting, whoever they vote for. Um, so on a JMB government, what is your vision for the education system of the country? Because human capital is very pivotal to growth and economic development in the country. So what do you envision as an educator from Harvard University, an Ivy League school like Harvard, What is your vision for the education system of the country? Thank you very much. First, I, I will, I will be, it would be a delight to work with your uh, campaign against academic dishonesty. Um, and secondly, if I were to advise a GMB government regarding education, it would be a, a very brief advice in the sense that there has to be an emphasis on quality education. And one means to that process is insisting very strongly on producing quality teachers um, in, in, in the sense that teacher training has to be strengthened. Um, we have several institutions that, that train teachers and those should be updated, increased and, and, and um, expanded, so to speak, so that the teachers train from pre-K pre to kindergarten, uh, um, uh, elementary school, middle school, high school. Those are the fundamentals that are, have to be strong to, to, for, 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 for a nation to produce quality uh, students. There has to be a, an emphasis on um, just not allowing just any school to, to jump up. You know, people have told me in Liberia, if you want to be rich in Liberia, build a school or build a church. It doesn't matter what you teach in that school, but I heard that before. <laughs> you know, you you just you just you just charge, you know, um whatever thousand dollars per, per student per uh uh um uh, uh per semester. I pay that kind of money for several of my nieces and 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 uh, uh, children, grandchildren, like I say, I got many in Liberia. Our tradition is vast. I, I what, the last time I was in Liberia, I asked one of my grandkids, "What grade are you in?" He says seven. I said, "Spell seven. He said, "S I V E N." This is the seventh grader. Okay, so there's got to be an emphasis on discouraging just any school to grow up. Um, it, it will hurt people because many people use this as an income, not so much for human resource development, but as an income generating facility. There's got to be an emphasis on those kinds of things. Um, there's got to be an emphasis on not only producing quality teachers, but also insisting that 
teachers get paid. You have some very good teachers still in Liberia, but they are going away from the teaching profession into other places where they can make more money because they have families to feed. They have projects to take care of. So there are many aspects of the education system that need to be streamlined, strengthened, others need to be strengthened, others need to be, you know what, eliminated. One mark of a, of a good administrator is you have to make strong decisions. Somebody said, I do not know the recipe for success, but I know the recipe for failure. Try to please everyone. So we need the, the, the good administrator takes some very strong this, uh, steps, decisions. Um, even if it is not pleasing to everyone, you have to take strong, strong, make strong decisions uh, in the interest of the country. But education is, an, is a sector of the government that needs incredible improvement, needs to be maintained uh, without any kind of a hesitation because at the, like I said earlier, the future of the nation depends on it. The future of individuals depends on education. So that would be my take with regard to a, a government on an education under the GMB government. Thank you, thank you, Doc. Uh, it's been a, it's been a, a great time with you. Um, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, if, if that's the best way to describe it. Uh, by your, I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed I, I, by your, your brilliance, your eloquence, uh, but most importantly, your, your vision for how we can um, move Liberia into a, a prosperous nation on the, on the JMB. And I have no doubt uh, in, his, in JMB's ability to to transform Liberia, I've seen an honest man. Uh, we've talked about integrity on this show many, many times. We've also spoken about honesty. Um, those are key components to leadership, uh, something that has been lacking within our, our body politic for many years. Uh, we've seen people who have uh, get crashed their way, acquire fraudulent uh, resources, enter our politics, and, 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 and bastardize and criminalize it. To their own advantage, uh, and so when we support GMB, we we're supporting a man of integrity, a man we believe uh, based on his his history, and you outline it uh, very eloquently and brilliantly in your book about a man who come from humble beginnings. You know, a man of humble beginning who who managed to um, to work his way through hard work, pull himself up by the bootstrap, based on honesty, based on integrity became the vice president of the country. And in October, we were voting for him to be president of Liberia. I think that is an inspiration, not just to, to, to us, but to our children and to our children's children that we're, we're part of a society in which people from, from all walks of life, once they inspire, aspire to be great, once they fight uh, uh, to be better, can achieve the, what to have a uh, God's given potential they have. So that, you know, in closing, I'd just like to thank you for joining us um, and your parting words uh, for joining us today. And we hope that you'll not be a stranger here. We want to see you here more and more. Uh, we're getting in the heat of the, the campaign. We need this, we need this added uh, weapon to our arsenal. <laughs> thank you, we would love to. Yeah, so that your final comment before we take leave of you. <laughs> Well, I just want to thank you for the invitation and it's been a, a privilege and an honor to, to talk with you all and especially to talk about somebody that I strongly believe in, I love dearly and I have great hopes in him and trust that he has not only the, the will but the ability to lead our nation. Um, he has the competence to lead our nation. You know, in, uh, in the Merchant of Venice, Shakespeare writes that superfluity comes to know by white hair, but competence that lives longer. It is that competence that we want, not just the superfluity that is manifested uh, by many people who uh, are in positions of leadership. It's not that superfluity. Um, no, we want somebody who has the competence to lead us. Um, and if, if we are looking for our nation to gain the future it needs and deserves, 
we have to go GMP. Thanks for the invitation. I'd love to come back anytime. Let me know, and I'll be here. Okay. All right. Uh, before Dad leaves, let me just uh, let me just say for me it was an honor having him on the platforms, particularly because uh, though not from the same uh, graduate program, but we shared alma mater. I am from Harvard as well, the Kennedy School. Though he is from the Harvard School of Education, where he has both uh, a master's degree and a PhD. I'm from the uh, Kennedy School, particularly the, um, the Make Career Program, the Edward Mason Program, the very program that President Selif attended. So it was a pleasure uh, sitting with um, a big gun. Just, just, want to say, just want to say that most people, I, I think you got an MPA, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, uh, the people from the Kennedy School get MPAs, and many of them go around the world as ambassadors and uh, and they do all kinds of things. So we used to say people from the Canada School get MPA, which meant master of practically anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That's a, that's Thank you, Doc. I'm a good rest of the evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. So oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank wow. you. Guys, uh <clears throat> Martin, you gotta come back on now. We'll come and talk about the, the state of it. But I mean, you listen to Dak and Andrew Miata, you know, it was a great conversation. And I like the way we started mm -hmm. off about turning issue, brought Dr. Malakwa in to talk about JMB. First, we'll talk about the challenges faced by the country, right? And and, and we we'll spice it with Dr. Malakwa's coming in to talk about what, what is lacking and what we need. And now we, we are about to look to some more into the um into the um into the uh this state of the nation i see a lot of our supporters been asked why well, i can talk about it unfortunately many of us on this platform did not listen to the full thing it was it was long and useless as i tell it it did not address <laughs> Don't say that. no 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 Auntie Miata, you see when i when i listen to a speech especially a speech where the president is supposed to talk about the state of the nation in the Western world, they say bread and butter. I, I I think that phrase, in my view, doesn't apply to Liberia. I like to say rice and soup. Liberians are concerned with rice and soup. Bread and butter, that is Western world terminology. Any speech on the state of the nation that fails to address the rice and soup issue is a useless speech. In a society where you fail to create jobs in the last five years, zero foreign direct investment, no private sector growth, an economy in tatters. And the reason why we are keep talking about and to it and keep fooling we are about a 7% inflation rate is because there's no investment in the country. So monies are not outside. No investment, banks are dry up. People cannot afford to hold and no money because inflation in economics is defined as an economic situation in which you have more money chasing fewer goals. No money in the economy, no real investment, no real importation. Today, inflation will balance, but mind you, the real street inflation, the real street inflation is when your salary is cut and you go to the store and the lovely men are paying attention to that of 7%, 8%, it's increasing his price because why? When he brings his goods at the port, he bribes. He bribes to get it cleared. And when he takes it to the store, he pays money in commerce, all these things. So what he does is that he adds up the price. So he cares about that your 7% in theory. But when you go to the store, it's a different thing. And all of us know here, yeah, when you go to the store to buy, now even under the same government, rice price increase. So how are we having single digit inflation? But at the same time, the prices of basic commodity that the library post should survive on continue to increase. Full inflation, transportation inflation, those are the key area. When the Liberian men say the country is better, it's measured on two ways. One, the food on the table in the evening, and two, how much money is in his pocket? Anything short of that, the country is, is not achieving anything. And let me just say this before I, I go. Martin, I don't know whether you're there. 
<clears throat> president Weah is the laziest president in the history of Liberia. And yes, when I say this, one of the simplest job of a president is to appoint. That's the simplest job of the president. Take the least poor people, give them job. As we speak, President Weah has failed to form his entire government. There's no ambassador at the AU, the African Union of all places. Liberia was the birthplace. The birthplace of what the later became the African Union. Liberia played a significant role. Today we don't have a rep we don't have an ambassador there. We also do not have an ambassador in Guinea, Kuwait, France. The government is incomplete. The Ministry of Finance, somebody died there. Up to now, can I even appoint somebody in those places? Just the simplest thing of forming your own government, you fail to do it. You cannot call a cabinet meeting. You cannot form your government. What else can you do? And this is why I particularly from people like Jeremiah Slonter, and I'm glad we're all in Bond County. We are recruited Slonter, humiliated him, put the red beret on his head, wasted water on the hair in the name of initiation. They could not give them job. Even with all these vacancies, we are cannot give him job. Is it because he's a fellow man for Bond County? But you get somebody that Blamo Nelson job. He's an ambassador to Japan because he's your Southeastern brother. This Bond County man who joined you, supported you, you can't get him job because he's not from the Southeast. You don't value him. You don't need him. It is what we call, and excuse me for this uh, expression, it's what we call condom, political condoms. You treat them like political condoms. You use them before they act or flush them after they act. That's what you've done. You've used them like condoms. Then to appease Nima County, You've downgraded the quality of the governance commission. The governance commission is a place, it's a think tank. It's not a place for, 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 for cronyism to just send people there because you want to appease a tribe. You take Harrison Yellow, a former representative. What is his expertise in research? His expertise in local governance, good governance. You're saying that because you want to appease Nima County. But yeah, it's a place that even somebody like McIntosh refused. So why can't we are give Nima County if you want to appease Nima? Why can't you give them Freeport of Moruvia? Why can't you give them LPRC? Why can't you fire two and give it to an Nimbai? Why can't you give the Ministry of, 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 of State to an Nimbai? Why can't you replace some of your cronies at Nokar Commerce and give it to Nimbais? But because you feel elections is coming and that you can fool the Nima people. You say, I will send your governance commission because I don't value that play. I need nothing said to happen to governance commission in my government. It can be as useless as useless can be. And so you just send anybody there. Since Dr. Sawyer died, the governance commission has lost its essence. You send Toga Gewi and McIntosh there. He refused the job. The budget of the place slashed because you don't even think that a place like the governance commission deserves a place in your government. And then the audacity to come today and lie to the Liberian people. I've said it. I said, to summarize the speech today in percentage, 83% lies, 9% we intend to, and 8% achievement. And the good news is all of your intentos will never happen because your time is out. You pack your bags. And I have some of you, and let me send this card here to our banks. Don't credit them now. Some of them will only be in power for nine months. It's like a lifespan of a pregnancy. You get on your money, you lose. By October 11, after election day, they will not be in a position to repay. Go pack the bear. Liberian people will show to them. That the mess you've created over the last six years will correct it. 
and correct it, we will. Let me go to you guys, gentlemen, on this thing. Martin, call you. You come and start the conversation on this uh, on this topic. Uh, Martin, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here, Stevie. And yeah, no, 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 no. one minute before you start, let me just uh, make an announcement before you start. Um, and you will be the lead person because, like I said, I got taste for serious speech. I didn't expect anything from we are speaking. And the people even writing the speech for him were very dishonest. You know, this man got a weak bearing. He reads like someone who is in the fourth grade. And you go read long speech for him. It's a general attempt to disgrace him. Because even good, good readers will not need that long to be reading something. And here's a guy who doesn't read well, who, who will find it very difficult to even pronounce words. And you go read long stuff for him. You are so unfair to him. So I have no appetite. It's good that you listen. And maybe after some of us take the time and do small reading of the trash, it's better to read and to listen to somebody who can read. Then we'll come the next time we, ha we have something to say. But well, you will be the, 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 the lead spokesman here, apparently because you listen. But I just wanted to say that tomorrow at 12.30, uh, the United Party will formally give the uh, response so the tabata that the president delivered today, I don't want to even call the State of the Union address or whatever, but the party will be responding formally to that tabata at 12.30 tomorrow at the party's headquarters. Also, tomorrow at 11 a.m., the political leader of the Liberty Party, uh, Senator Nyomli Kanga Lawrence, will be issuing the response on behalf of the Liberty Party at uh, the Capitol building at 11. So at 11 o'clock, the Liberty Party through Senator Kanga, and then 12.30, the yeah. Unity Party at their headquarters. I just thought to announce that on the platform before we move into the discussion. Yeah, great, 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 great information, yeah. Yeah, and, and quite frankly, I think those information are, are really important because a lot of people are following the show so they can also monitor tomorrow some of the important reactions from prominent politicians and state people in the country. I, I, I listened to, to Stephen and he was, he was very unequivocal in his thoughts about the, the SONA State of the Nation address. And quite frankly, I agree with you and, and veteran Pia. There's no other way to describe it. You know, like I said this morning, it is no longer the state of the nation address. It has become it has become um there's a description I give it. Let me go back to it. I said uh Okay, this was what I said. Same old nothing always. <laughs> same old nothing always. It's the same sona. Yeah. <laughs> so before oh, I give me S A S O N A. Yeah, same old nothing same always. Same old nothing yeah. always. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, no say address. Yeah, <laughs> same old nonsense address. So let me give a my, background of the address. My because, fellow, my fellow you know panelists. Wait, 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 Martin, let me add that one something. Okay. Uh, Martin, I love to hear you and everything else, but since I didn't listen to Sona, I really don't care to listen to it. Um, it's unfair for me to sit here and participate. So oh, I would you like gotta, to, you gotta be here, or you gotta be here. You gotta be I here. Want your, yeah. I want your permission to go here. sleep. Yeah, you, gotta, you gotta be here. You gotta be here. <laughs> okay, uh, and the but matter, I don't know what you gotta be here. We gotta be here. We gotta end the show. So, I I just got the full text of the sonar. And if you guys want me to read specific areas, no, 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 
How you get Joe? We have to research the six pages. I'm telling you. And in three hours, 21 minutes. Can you oh. imagine? Wow. You're tortured apple. You're tortured apple are. today. You're tortured him. I repeat because because Stephen, you know what I did? I ran the text through turn it in. You know the to, to, like the software. Software. yeah. So <laughs> and guess what? Uh -huh. The speech was plagiarized 89%. Oh Lord. <laughs> oh Jesus I'm going, Christ to, Nazareth. I'm going to upload the plagiarism report from turn yeah. in. Yeah. So 20 yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, nine percent. So you know what they did? They took 2019 speech and 2020. That's, That's the combination face. they did. And just play around it. And they're getting it to read. Copy and paste. To the country like that. And the president himself has no intellectual curiosity I'm to telling determine you, what I should have to say no. This was the same thing I read 2009. I'm reading it again. This was the same thing I read 2020. And I'm reading it again. He has no intellectual question then to say no. I can keep repeating the same thing. I just read it in 2019 and 2020. You bring it to me again in 2023 to read. <laughs> the speech was plagiarized to 89%. Oh, How will you give 66 pages to a judge we had to read? The yeah. man who doesn't even read more than a kingdom garden student. After almost six years, his reading skills are still poor. Because well, he cannot it. do anything after work. If he goes to work, he, don't, he doesn't do anything. Go, he doesn't even read. <laughs> but in the first place, he, he he doesn't know how to read. You know the essence of every speech. I, I, the I major essence Joe, of every speech. Is I see, Martin, I see why clarity. those who are listening. There was no clarity today. Martin, I see why those who are listening say as the speech progressed, the heavy clapping they started from the beginning started dying down, and eventually everybody got tired of clapping because three hour plus speech. You got tired of clapping. You know, you know, you know, you know what funny thing about the speech here. They and the government key and they harmonization, right? When they did the harmonization, they put people in they, they put a lot of civil servants below the, the 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 minimum wage. They put their own people below the minimum wage. Then the president came back and got I noted that nobody in the country is going to make money be below the minimum wage. I have instructed the diner like later to add our money up because campaign coming. Oh, but these people were making way more above the minimum wage. When you took office, you cut the pay. You started paying someone as low as $45 a month. Far below the minimum wage. And now, six months of election, you're talking about, you worry about them. But President, oh, four years ago, five years ago, you're doing your harmonization. We warned you. We told you it was a failure. Your, your, your national revenue can't be increasing against the backdrop that salary is not flexible downward and you're reducing people pay it makes no economic sense what it does it kills morale it undermines productivity and this is why government ministry and agency are practically dead in Liberia. people don't even go to work no productivity just a few handful of people who got who can go to work and do their job so that martin continues saying he, yeah, I think martin, he gave up some good start go ahead martin yeah, but listen to what the man said relative to what you just said, Stephen. He said, in, 2020, in 2019, we also set out to fix the broken and unfair wage system in which government workers were paid without any set rules or pay grades. To end this unfairness, we had to abolish general allowance system that was allowing this, this to happen. You know, so, so like, like you rightly said, right, the man came to power, for example. I talked to one of the public school teachers. In fact, he's an executive of the National Teachers Association of Liberia. He said on Ellen Johnson's Shalif, um, they were actually getting on the average up to 60, 70,000. Mm -hmm. Now they are getting like 30,000. <laughs> so what is he talking about? Talking about increasing the salaries and allowances of teachers. The man has failed. Besides that, he downsized a lot of teachers, qualified, competent, without replacing. I thought when you downsize qualified and competent people, there should be a framework to replace. Because you're getting people out of the workforce in a particular sector without replacing them. And the demand for such service is very high. So how does supply meet? How does supply meet demand in that regard? 
you just getting people out and you are not putting them back. You are not replacing them with qualified, competent people. So he miserably feel, how be it, where are the 6,000 teachers? One thing he also talked about, he talked about uh, renovating schools and universities across the country. He could not say which schools, which universities he has renovated. He could not even name two, three. Look at the University of Liberia, for example. Let's go right to Capitol Hill, where he was delivering his so-called State of the Nation address. The University of Liberia is still in Tatas. He's still on one building. The GH building is still renovating it for almost five years. <laughs> even though his mansions and estates on the highway are finished. What kind yeah. of president is this? If you are if if you are if you are serial man, you donate don't you donate nothing to your body. In less than six months, the man had a duplex up on Nine Street. His wife is building an entire city in yeah. Marshall. Yeah, but GH building, just GH building alone, he's been renovating it since five years ago. He can finish. You know, so you can talk about investment in education, for example, when a lot of teachers, lecturers, professors are demotivated as a result of your quote unquote harmonization process. Look at inflation for in, inflation is very high. Whilst wages are sticky. Yes. Yeah, wages of public servants are not going up. No. You know, it's even coming down. So how and does they didn't that reduce correspond? It. They, didn't, they didn't use, they didn't reduce it against the inflation. Exactly. 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 Then I heard them talking about bringing inflation down. Without understanding or explaining the rationale beyond, quote unquote, the bringing down of inflation, it's simply because you are in the programs of the IMF, the receivership programs of the IMF, and you are drawing down on your special drawing rights. Mm -hmm. You are depleting your foreign reserve assets, right? Because the point in case is inflation will go up if you do not have foreign currencies in the market, right, to create the stability and make sure that it is in a balance to your own local currency. But the point is, you're getting more U.S. dollars from the IMF, you know, to, to create the kind of stability in the market first, without first, understanding the impact. Stability. Yeah. Because yeah, but so do you have to make sure your economy has to be productive. You be putting almost here. everything. Let me ask you this question. You you are an economist. Uh, no, I'm a student is... of economics. Oh, okay. You are a student of economics. So yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you're still in that range. So as you're discussing inflation, let me ask this question because I, I, I'm not an economist. Neither am I a student of economics. On the question of inflation, versus your, your your local currency in terms of value against a foreign currency in this case in the case of Liberia, the us dollar so in in, in in 2017 just before cdc took office the exchange rate between the us dollars and the Liberian dollar was 125 dollars meaning 125 dollar ld to one usd when Mr. We are King of Power, remember there was a time the rate went to over two hundred dollars per dollar. Mm -hmm. Red right now is one hundred and fifty-four, one hundred and fifty-five dollars to a dollar. So in twenty seventeen, before they, they, they took power, it was one twenty-five. Even though it went above two hundred, red right now is one fifty-four. So you will see that the local currency was much more stronger. In 2017, then what it is now, and the record says that in 2017, inflation was at 12.42%. Uh, at one USD to 125. Now they are at one USD to 154, and they say inflation is 7%. So I, I'm not an economist, like I said, so I get confused. And I will want somebody like you to explain how 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 is that happening? You know, so, and, and when I was doing calling out for you, one of the things I said, I mean, one of the things that just came to my mind is that after five years as president, 
The president still don't know, for example, if you wanted to cost certain figure, you say 132 point this million, that you may, you may likely you may correctly say 132.26 million, and now 132.27 or 26 million. After five years, as a president, you don't know that, and the people who help you with the speech, they didn't rehearse you that. Whenever you see figure coming after the, the whole, don't announce it at 36, 35, or say, but just say 132.16 or 132.36 instead of saying 132.36 million. So I just would like to clap on that only because 7% inflation, the rate is 1 to 154. Is that 160 now? Ah, okay, 160. And then there, it was just 125. And then they say the inflation rate was 12 point something percent. Talk to us, economists, talk to us. So, so, um, so one of the major drivers of inflation is the fact that the money supply has increased, right? So if you increase the supply of local currency in the market, there's a tendency that consumers will have increased purchasing power and increased purchasing power can put pressure on the supply side, right? So if there is pressure on the supply side, demand is high, right? Because people have more money. So if demand goes up, obviously those supplying the goods and services will increase the price. And inflation is the general increase in the price of basic commodities. So one of the best way to, to solve this problem is, for example, from the monetary perspective, you increase the interest rate, right, exactly. to reduce the supply of money in the market, right? They are not doing that. They are supplying the market with more Liberian dollars. They're printing more money. So the more you print more money, veteran PR, right, people have access to more money, local currency, they will go for more goods and services. And and, and, and the goods and services we have in Liberia, uh, they are not as equivalent as the supply of local currency. So obviously there will be disequilibrium. And if there's disequilibrium, you expect inflation as well because goods and services are limited money is more, right? So that's one of the things that's driving inflation. Another thing that's driving inflation in the country, a lot of the foreign direct investment companies are repatriating their profits. There is no kind of control Right. Say, for example, capital flow controls. Yeah. Like how Nothing you have at all. money. So people just make a lot of money, millions of dollars. They repatriate, those, they, they repatriate those currencies to wherever they want to repatriate. There's no policy, monetary or fiscal policy in place to limit. A lot of countries around the world, let me tell you what they are doing, right? So if you have a foreign company, for example, Veteran PR, and you want to operate in Liberia, right? We, we tell you, look, if you make 20 million in profit, you can only ex export or repatriate 2 million. The 18 million will remain here. So it's, it's circulating in the economy, right? So you can't send all 20 million abroad. So then the demand for foreign currency becomes higher. So you create volatility in the foreign exchange market. So there are many factors responsible for that. I see two running around talking about inflation rate has been stabilized. That's a lie. That's a the lie. The reason why, now Liberia is enrolled in a program called Extended Credit Facility of the IMF. The Extended Credit Facility program of the IMF is intended to buttress your weak balance of payment position. Balance of payment has to do with import-export, right? We, we, we import more than we export. So our balance of, of trade or payment is negative. So that what the IMF does, the IMF said, okay, since we have this foreign currency assets for you here at the IMF, you can withdraw some, right, to create stability. So we withdraw, like the other day we withdrew 25 million. Twerk and I account mm -hmm. for that 25 million. The intent of withdrawing that 25 million was to get, right, excess liquidity of Liberian dollars from the market because the more Liberian dollars too much on the market. Yeah, so to get some of those excess out of the market, we needed U.S. dollars from the IMF to create that stability. So we sold foreign currency in exchange for local currency, right? That, that was the strategy they used. Where that 25 million today, he cannot account for that. Now, 
the point I want to make is you can't tell us, Mr. Weir, that inflation has come down from 30% to 9% without providing any economic rationale. It's unfair to the people. You, he didn't say anything. He just said inflation down from 30% to 9%. But, but, but Martin, when you, let me ask you this question. When you just post that, and this is where it gets, it, 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 it makes no economic sense. When you right. just post the actual street inflation, you know, I'm not talking about the theoretical inflation on paper, where you say 7%. The actual street inflation, where the, the, the food transportation inflation, because the price is going up. Prices of these basic incentives are going up. When you when you just oppose the theoretical inflation on paper to that of the actual inflation on the street, where the price of rice, for example, has increased from a bag of rice from $13.50 to $17, a gallon of gas, a bag of coal that was once $150 going to $500, $800, a, a cup of rent that was $40 going to $100, $160. So the actual inflation out there that didn't that our people are feeding in the packet. Can you convince them based on these numbers that that, that twelve will write for we have to recogitate? So, so the first thing is, we 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 need to be honest to our people, Stephen. For example, let's take civil servants as a case, right? A lot of the civil servants nominal wage, right, is one fifty. So you can come to us, you tell us, today, civil servants are receiving 150 minimum. No, they are not receiving 150 minimum. And let me provide some economic sense to this. There is something called nominal wage and real wage. With real wage is equal to nominal wage minus inflation. Twice has to stop lying to our people. So you can say the nominal wage on the average for civil service in Liberia is 150. But if you minus inflation from there, it is no longer 150. So it is real wage equals nominal wage minus inflation. We have to stop lying to our people. So if you minus the inflation, because if inflation is 9%, obviously it has an impact on your gross, which is the nominal, right? You can't just say 150. No, if you manage inflation, it can't be 150. <laughs> so it reduces from 150 to probably 120 or 130 or 115. If that happens, then you have to also consider the, 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 the prices of basic commodities on the market. What's the price of rice? If the person takes out, like for example, 30 US dollars from the 130 or 150 after managing the impact or effect of inflation. Literally, if that person has a household size of five as per standard, legit standard, right? You ain't got anything remaining to pay your children's school fees. No. Because just food and transportation will kill you. Exactly. Food and transportation feeding the money already. Food and transportation. You need to do anything. Just food and transportation. No. So the reason why the people are suffering, say, okay, inflation is down, but prices are still sticky. Exactly. Sticker prices. How can inflation be coming down and prices are sticky? Prices going up. Yeah, prices going up, inflation coming down. But that's good that, economics. That's economics. Yeah, I am not an expert, expert of economics, but I'm a student of economics. economics. You can say inflation but, coming down. It, it almost looking like veteran PR, you're saying prices of goods coming down, right? But we're still paying more. <laughs> you guys see that's the, contradiction. Look, look all yeah. I think so. All, all the but yeah, yeah, you in the cell, yeah, inflation drop. Yeah, you will go to the pump, you can see it at the gas pump. Yeah, yeah, the pump price still high. Well, you say the inflation pump coming price down. Is not dropping. If the pump price is like bro going up, you say inflation dropping, back on red price going up. It's basic essential. A family that makes 150 or five, you can't survive nine like bro on 150, no, no, no. you die. But but all I think that that George we are read on today to a wrote it and gave it to him. He exactly. said, don't understand. So regurgitate. Yes. And 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 if if you really listen to his speech, he was jumping here and there. It was not. In we are exhausted after three sequence. minutes. Look, we are at an, an attention span of three minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you gave well, me three hours for the one minute. Well, yeah, it's a man who doesn't make sense even in one second. Yeah, 
Then you get in three you, hours. And you're you telling him, you tell him to make sense in three hours, 21 minutes? We are finished after the first 30 minutes. Are you telling me? Look, I said it when the man was laughing. I said the, it when the, 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 the man was laughing. The, 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 the man is calling Joel Howard Taylor, uh, Madam Speaker. <laughs> yeah, they know. They were lost. I said three minutes ago. Oh, they well, let's go to another you, issue, right? USAID says you, you say. Yeah, he talked about, for example, energy. <laughs> he talked about energy. He just said our partners are installing uh, electricity equipment around the country, so very soon you will have access to energy. <laughs> we, we are already aware that installations are ongoing. You don't need to tell us. What do you need to be telling us, Mr. President? How many persons in Morovia have access to electricity? Yeah, I'm in, a, I'm, in a, I'm in a household. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the in Grand Cayman County, how many households in Grand Crew? How many households in, 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 in Lofa? In Bon, how many households have access to electricity? We are aware that these people are installing some equipment. You don't need to tell us that again. You told us 2019, you told us 2021, you told us 2020. <laughs> you cannot, you cannot, you cannot fatten a pig on market day. <laughs> Martin, tell us, tell us Martin, about, tell us about transmission <clears throat> and distribution. Don't tell us about installation. Martin, yeah, anti matter. I'm sorry, uh. For our leader who loves to sing and dance, did he say anything about the arts in his annual message? The no. arts? Well, he's a dancer now and a singer. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing about arts in the. No, but look at the budget. Ente how much money going to that but, era? But, but let me just reveal this to the public, Ente I have been going through the budget. Go on on the budget of the Ministry of Culture. I mean, the Ministry of Information and Cultural Affairs. There's a segment there called Tourism. Tourism has zero dollars. Exactly. Zero. And, 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 and the point is, Stephen, here is a guy who does not even know the economic benefits of tourism. That, that is a resource error. I'm trying to bring in resources. Yeah, I gave you an example of <laughs> Gambia, right? The, the economy of Gambia is dependent on tourism. Even France. Just the other day, I was in France. It's tourism. The economy of France is dependent on tourism. Tourism brings more money in the short term or in the short term. But the Dubai people can be running to that. What's in there? Exactly. That tourism. The tourism. So the man does not even know the importance of tourism. I see his quote unquote minister, deputy ministers at the ministry. All they do make noise about press conferences, describe politicians the way they want to describe. You know, and craft they, are even, form. they are not even innovative to say, okay, this is the newest sector of, of productivity in any given economy. So let's focus on developing the, the, the Providence Island. For example, I was in Kenya the other day, Stephen. I went to the park, the Nairobi Park. Mm -hmm. I paid 25 USD just to enter. Wow. Look at Providence Island, how historic that place is. If we maximize or optimize the benefit of Providence Island alone, you know how many people want to see Providence Island? But the other day I but checked. But I remember before the war, Christmas Day, like, where we used to go. Exactly. The other day I checked, Stevie. Used to pay money I to saw, I saw the minister, I saw the minister of information taking a delegation from the states. They're free of charge. Should people be going down there free of charge? They should pay money. What are you from America? What are you from China? What are you from wherever? Before you go to the Providence Island, you should pay. When people go to parks, historic destinations in other countries, they pay money. Mm -hmm. You pay to see those things. In Liberia, people can go to see the Kano. Matera Nipo Kano up Duka. They, so if you see Duka Palace, people can go there free and take pictures and do whatever they want to do. Nobody paying anything for our tourist side. Patawi. Uh, yeah. Look at Patawi Waterfall. Group of Europeans were there recently. I watched a video on Facebook. They're there free, enjoying themselves. Nobody taking money from them. What kind of nonsense is this? People are using our resources free of charge. Nobody taking money from them. But the thing here is, is the leadership we have who don't understand how to govern. That is why we need them out. That's all. Because 
The country is losing a lot, and we have people that are just enriching themselves. That's all. So, 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 Stephen, before we take it, oh yeah, obviously you can't have a day like this and you, you, you don't play a major portion of your, of your support <laughs> yeah. They have to have their say. But, but yeah, let me just yeah, say yeah, this. Yeah. Let me just say this before we uh, conclude. Um, uh, please give me one minute, please. But we're finished your talk. I already talking. We're not taking call yet. I will not call you. Get on the line. I get call. I want to. Yeah, but let me wait. Let me finish because I'm saying something. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> You always ask me for one minute. Uh, uh, yeah, but you were still talking. I'm not saying you were not talking. I'm just saying, I don't want to forget hey, my talk. Sorry about the talk. Hey, yeah, hey, I need to say that. Right. Hey, yeah, hey, I, hey, I, I think I almost forgot the talk. But anyway, Stevie, this is what I was trying to say. If you follow what happened in America and other places, and this is a challenge to the Liberian media, uh, if President Biden gave his State of the Nations address today, or if it was campaign time and they were in campaign debate with another candidate, before the show, or before the debate ends, or before the message ends, the media will move to the other person. That like call fact check. All the lies that Biden would have said yeah, the lie during, that, during that address, the media will begin to point it out and say they're doing fact checking. The Liberian media, when you throw out garbage, the public garbage. They would never tell you, say, the president said this one and we dream fact check. The president lied about this. The president misspoke about this. The president was partly correct, but not entirely correct. That's what the media does here. I am hoping that the Liberian media will reach to a point where people just don't throw things to them. And even though they know those things are not true, they will just publish it in their papers. When you do that, you are aiming the spread of misinformation. It means anybody can just come and lie, and you will help them to give coverage to the lie. Spray anyhow. The country is almost 200 years. Our media should be as strong as anything now to the extent that when leaders speak, fact check them. That's one. And finally, I do not need Mr. Weir's State of the Union address to know that Liberia is now a killing field. I do not need President Weir's State of the Union's address to know that he came to power as a poor man and he's not a rich man. I do not need his State of the Union address to know that people were being relatively paid well under the past government. He came, took away their pay, reduced them to nothing, and they are suffering. I don't need President We are State of the Union address to know that Liberia now is a lawless country. The rule of law is on attack. Lawlessness is at the highest peak. I don't need State of the Union address to say that. I don't need a State of the Union address to know that in, law, in a long time, that the first time a country like Liberia will come and sanction our official for criminality is now. I don't need State of the Union address to know that one finance minister, an individual, just say he went in the street and gave money to money a changer in the name of taking assets liquidity for the market, and 25 million was squandered overnight. I don't need a State of the Union address to know that 30 million dollars were just dumped in the pocket of wasting Tata and other others in the name of COVID relief. No, I don't need that. I don't need President We are addressed to know that Liberia now has a sole regime, as Prince Johnson said. I don't need State of the Union address to know that monies that Bima County was entitled to Institute of Development Fund did not got made in five years on a we are. That Grand Basel similarly did not get theirs in five years. That Bond County did not get theirs in five years. I don't need State of the Union address to know. The Western Coast is some more million that. The Western cluster was owing the counties there. The day Croco G and said the port should pay only 11 million. And even after they pay that amount, the five million that's supposed to go to the three county is still in thin air. We can't locate where it is. I don't need State of the Union address to know that to be an auditor is to sign a death warrant in Liberia. That they killed them the chicken. 
I don't need a State of the Union address to know that on the eve of the president's blessing, another political murder in the killing of Prince Colin took place. And I could go on and on and on and on. And you in Liberia, who live in these situations, who know why you passing through, I doubt whether you need anything called State of the Union address from President Weah to know the state of affairs that you are living in. And finally, to the people who did this to Weah, perhaps there's a special place reserved in hell for all of you to take a man who cannot read a goose's grace standard and give him three hours and 21 minute message to read? Hell is your portion. That's all I have to say for now. Yeah, Pastor, then well, Pastor finish your point. The message is clear. It's over the clear. It's the portion. It's over the clear. But you know, that three hours, 20, 21 minute message is his farewell. He's not going to have another chance. So he just had to round it up. But interestingly, I don't know if you guys did listen. I never heard him talking about the death of the orators. Nothing. Uh, and one thing. He said that caught my attention is there are more students in school than, than the previous government. I don't know if you guys listened to that. And I was like, what is this guy saying? You know, let's go to the line, man. I mean, you know, uh, Chupo, announce the number. <laughs> <laughs> so So uh, for those of you following, you can call us up on 0881 and 0770-47-2019. And those in the diaspora, you can call us up on plus 1-401-688-8266. Uh, let me just give the four in enrollment rate because the okay. Reverend talked about it. 13.8 percent enrollment rate has fallen under President Weir. 13.8 percent. So it's also lie. 13.8 percent. Yeah, enrollment rate has fallen. So, Martin, what we could do? Let's do a fact check of that speech. Yeah, we need to come back because we don't have yeah, the time. Yeah, so that's yeah, what I'm yeah. saying. Let you, let let all of us go back, do a fact check of that speech, and come back here maybe Wednesday or Friday, depending on your schedule. And let that let, let explain all the lies. My man, I gotta go hustle. Stevie, yeah, you want to take my Wednesday? Let me know anytime. I will not get you the check. All right, time. okay, all right. No problem. Yeah, yeah. Too many lies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, man, you should play that song twice before we end the show. Be lying. Oh, I did not play that song. <laughs> the people fool us. The, you know, when ah. Takon J, when Takon J, as a civilian, was making that song yesterday, <laughs> he told you were attacking the ending government. Yeah. Today, he jam with own song because own song we made is still applicable to even his own people today that we will play the song. They make a go to we are program and they can play it. They will play the song. They won't die. They won't. <laughs> they won't commit suicide when they hear the song. <laughs> My people, where you at? Where you at? Wake up when you slumber. Stop slipping. Go ahead, Jaco. I have some calls here. Yeah, I have some calls here. Yeah, take it. Okay, call on the line, uh, Gwivlink. What's the name? Why are you calling us from this evening? Yeah, good evening. Uh, my tell name call, is Ron. Tell the call to start listening to why I want to listen to call that on and get to the phone. Yeah, so, so please turn down your monitor, please. Uh, the device you need to get the program. Please turn it down. Okay, please go ahead. You have one minute. I want to say good evening to Captain Pia, TV, and Pastor, and the Piazza, or mayor down there, and uh, you call him Martin Cori, who is actually a real wiki. I was here when it comes to the education of what you do. But you know, today was just a long place of time with the economy, everything just went down to go and listen to. I don't even know because we could have generated more money today. But the whole country was just locked down, listening to nothing. You know, the worst that was that. Can you imagine? Even the one that said the poor boy put that and they think for people to come in one day sooner because nobody was there. That was really disappointing. I had a photo, I would have even seen that with a photo. That was really disappointing. You see, people are hungry. What do you expect for the one in the city to do? Just tell you what, for the medical reason. What is better you get around here? Nothing. So we just pray that our, our old man is strong, you know, because this alone, this sooner alone, the entire country.
Thank you. And this person is already on the line. Hello. Hello. Yes, sorry. Live on the program. What's your name? This is Cody Mosa. Cody Mosa. Please go ahead. You have one minute. Okay. Uh, at this thing goes, some of us, we are students of economics and mathematics. So I'm going to speak on the perspective on which the president said uh, they have stabilized the economy or they have reduced inflation. I think. Uh, he was taking the context of the monetary value that the exchange rate. But the real inflation, inflation is on the market. This government has failed, has failed, I want to say this, they have failed to stabilize the prices. They condemn or they decrease as the old government because the past government, because they said it wouldn't go through prices according to them. They have come, they have failed to, 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 to regularize and stabilize prices on the market. So you have the the, the, the monetary aspect of exchange rate in the market at 150 for some point in time, whereby the yes, commodities, the price has got rocket on a daily basis. One the mathematical aspect of it, the economic aspect. One the mathematical aspect of it. I did math, at least, and you know, but I did math, 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 Every number has the decimal bar in the in the whole number side. The whole number side is one to When you say point, you call the numbers by numbers. You can't give a decimal numeration, I mean, a whole number numeration to the decimal number. So the person was in complete error. I hope people keep it in the person can read and what have you. He can read or he don't think he can read, but he doesn't know number. So they still have to go and teach you how to read now. Thank you. Thank you so much. This person is live. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, Chief. Your life on the class reloaded. You have one name. What's your name? Yeah, my name from? is God Tibor Brown. Calling on Tijan number six, Mozzarella County. Please go ahead. You have to be snappy. All right. I want to take your time to say thank you to your studio guest, Martin Kim Kuali, and thank you to the peace loving people of everybody on our ground. In my own thinking, I think the, the state of nation addressed by the president today was a waste of time, waste of energy, and waste of that pay of money. Your president, we have lacked the leadership ability to lead that bureau. It's very sad that you are making fun of the state of nation address, and citizen was there clapping for him. So it's very sad. He need to go, and we're voting on Tony Tony TV. Thank you. Thank you so much. This person is live. Hello. <laughs> yeah, good evening. Good evening, Chief. You're live on the class below that. What's the name you calling us, man? Oh, thank you. I joined from District 6. And I'm uh, the boss of Lossy and Ghosting Sagacious Wisdom. Yeah, you know, Chief. Yeah, thank you. You know, we listening to this, this so called so -called Sonan address on today. You know, my brother, the class destination of Sonan is the same old nonsense again. You know the reason why? President, we have to ultimately the two that the government has allotted the middle status or in the midst of the country to us. And uh, for now, we don't know how that identical money was. And listen, what we have put, we have set that to be, you know, the issue of illegal jobs, the president, we have ever thought no one about illegal jobs. We are going to sit down and say, what three hours, three hours, everything, I don't see that person laughing, but I don't see who goes to a convention. No. You see? So the thing that we are stuck for the for the for the person is that what we say I think we're doing yeah so that's 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 Thank you. I'm happy to see Martin calling. Martin, welcome. Um, I'm calling because we have to be serious, man. Have be serious and 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 talk to our people to move the joke up for impact. Call himself President George Weah. The man is making joke and mock or every day. It's like a joke. We are like a complete laugh, laugh, laugh. He's stuck on the on the world stage. Everywhere you think we're laughing, we're laughing. What kind of bad law they say? The far far also about people. Have you all seen the man? Your people lie. They they read all the the lie we put for you. You want tell me just to go to go to go to go read? You give me really good. You give me really your own lie completely. We tired with nonsense. Let me let me go. Let me 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 let
this is how people show up people that they need a piece of joker. It's the here, here again, a criminal game, they gotta go. Our country gotta be free, we gotta be free, our country for them in here. I want call for thank you. Thank you. Call her on the line from the US, go ahead. Make your point. Minnesota. Go ahead, sir. Um, thanks so much for the topic on the discussion today. Um, for me, I'm not surprised, actually. Uh, Putin men are just we are into the office of the presidency. I'm not surprised of what he's doing. The guy doesn't have what it takes to be a president. But a few guys that decide to use his um, his popularity to actually um, enrich himself still behind and put him there. So the Liberian people need to make a change and make it now. So I'm not surprised of what he's doing, his um, inability to actually lead the people of Liberia and bring development into different sectors, um, making sure that his government is up to date by employing people of skills to actually serve the Liberian people. I'm not surprised of everything that he's doing because he doesn't have the ability to do them. And that's why he's doing what he can do. Thank you. All right. Before Dupont take the call, Stevie, Miata, uh, Martin, all of you are on, uh, Reverend, Reverend, Reverend uh, Mo. Are, are you guys aware of anybody been asking like to turn Prince Johnson over to them and for what? Is there any call from anywhere to say turn Prince Johnson over to, to us? Uh, for me, for yeah, me, I'm not aware. I don't know why the call out taking all these things, uh, 10 print. Nobody have asked for print to be turned over anywhere. So why are you taking your team from that print you support this? Uh, you got the one thing, thing you want to do what? I'm not aware that anybody asking for it. So you can go ahead, take your call. Call on the line. What's the name you're calling us from? Good evening. Yes, good evening, Chief. You're live on the class reloaded. You have one meaning. What's the name you're calling us from? So there are a lot of things that we have to fast check. 
leg one. He said they have constructed technical and vocational uh, training center in eight counties. And yet, the president failed to name those eight counties and where or what part of those counties those things were constructed. All right? Because those are issues that Canadians will go because if we gave the direct direction of whatsoever project that has been done, someone will have easy access of going to check. But if we just say in you know, the blank space that are in eight counties, he gave the people more work, and this is why some of them, uh, most of the time, some of our generators don't go out there to check for issues that maybe have been said over. So I think this person, let me appreciate him for a farewell message, and I think it was just a waste of time today that he took our TV, our plus to waste them down going back to Tony. He did. That was not the detail of today's speech. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. And this call is already on the line. Wavelink. Yeah, and let those call out stick to one minute, uh, Jupon. Don't give them freedom to just talk on anything. Okay, uh, I want to <laughs> applaud the president for his speech. Uh, okay, hello. Yeah, good evening. Yes, Chief, you're live on the program. What's your name? Where are you calling us from? Yes, Eugene, Utah, from the Kenyan of Grandbasa County. Okay, please, please, you have one minute, please. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, our president. Exactly, the mission today for me is complete precarity. And look, let me just tell the people of Basel and at large. For the day, I think through one resource of Basel, so, the calls on the one, the just on the one percent vote from Basel here. Today, I'm listening to him. He said the GBCC bridge. There's a major work ongoing. It is false and misleading. There's a there's a open call uh, Jupiter. And for a year ago, the guy came here and had the pass road that is for pedestrian. Where the student just passed. And it was say a monkey bridge, we call it monkey bridge. Since they got the present, then today I'm listening to that it's a major way ongoing. So I think it is about time that we shall You have to be uh, snappy, Chief. You have to be snappy because your time is, is running out. Yeah, it's what I'm saying. So, uh, uh, like in fact, the statement you made, I, I, I press that law that alone to keep the purpose. Thank you so, so much. I mean, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you, Chief. Call on the All line. Right. What's your yeah. name? Where are you calling us from? Yeah, uh, I was trying to call the second time because one guy from the city, I would just call me just now that I like, start trying to put this challenge up. I'm saying numbers when you're calling numbers are automatic. But figures. You call, you call a lot of people want to take part, so you don't take one call across. That man calling the second time. You know, thank you. Uh, hello. Yeah. So, thank you. A lot of people on the line. No, you can just call us two times. Let me take the call on the line. Uh, you can come out of here. So it's actually calling my personal number, and I'm not using it on there, please. You can you can call the number, then pin it on the screen. Please. Okay, call, call off on the U.S. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Hello, hello, hello to everybody. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, my name is Luis Amara, and I'm, I'm calling from the state of Colorado. Uh, make, make, a, make a point. You got one minute. Yes. Mine does not have anything to do with the president's speech, but it's an appeal to the opposition. I know for sure that the opposition has been having problems of unity, but be mindful of the second round. I think the opposition should now start to discuss among themselves how to collaborate on the second round. And that is, CDC definitely will be going for second round. That I know for sure. But if at all the opposition don't unify themselves during the second round, I'm sorry that we'll have a second term of Mr. Uya. Thank you very much. Bye bye. You go ahead. Uh, yes, hello. We live on the program. What is your name? Well are you calling us from this evening? Okay, this is Ayatollah calling from Monrovia. Okay, Chief, you have just one minute. Yeah, I have, I 
I want to ask Martin and the rest of the panelists. Uh, according to Carlos Gray, I think who is chair on uh, executive, he said for the program today, they were using suspending 250,000 US dollars. So my question to you guys is, was it worth the amount of money in this economy? That money spent, was it worth the program today? Thank you. <laughs> we are just want to spend money <laughs> to buy beer and uh, expensive shopping. I think I was my brother. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars at a time when people can barely farm rice. Yes, you have one minute. What's the name? Where are you calling us from tonight? You have to be snappy, Chief. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so very kindly for waiting on the discussion. Hello? 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 Yes, sorry, live on the class be loaded. You have one minute. Please go ahead. Tell us the name where you're calling us from. Yes, this is Kenya from Delta. Please go ahead. So we, we appreciate the person's today. Today it was very surprising that you could see Sinitian will go to the radio station to know the better living condition of Liberia today as a civil servant. We were all glued to the radio to listen to the president's speech. And the president said that civil servant, according to the public health law, no one should be less than 150. But in that same direction, he said that there should be some increase. And he said, Leader won't be one before they come. And he is the president. The budget is needed for the executive to the legislature. And when there's an increase in that direction, the president should be the one that should say, Oh, there should be 50 or 25 percent increase for the library. So today, what will be on the people's table? And the president went about telling us that there's a massive development of rules in our country that are grieving to go country. And if you follow the arrow from grieving to go country, you cannot see one more construction. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Chief. So, how can the people access to the rural area? Thank you. Order on the line. Hello. Yeah. Uh, good evening. Yes. Uh, big, brother, big brother Pia and other guys on the show. Good evening to you people. Yes. Good evening. Please go ahead. You have one minute. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm Sabine S. Ovana. I do join the conversation this evening from Clarata, a member of CYM. Our goal is to make George Weah a one term Boca dancer, so called president. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, our having said this evening, Listening to the president free or 
with 33 hours, with our head telling us anything that makes sense, you know, or I regret that, or that, that time we said. But then to go, uh, to go power, I hear the president mentioning him, or he speaks to read that, or not he watch, there have been no political press, uh, prisoner yet, it is true, you have no political prisoner, or you have political dead people. Wherein anybody come out to express their grievances, you kill them. It is good that for uh, those people be in jail than for them to be killed. But I can tell every Nigerian is right. On the part of Mr. Weir, we had a CIA board who came to Liberia. Yes, that's a bad sound of Liberia. We all we know the function of the CIA in the US. They are there to chase criminals and bad bad people. This man coming into Liberia here was not a good sound for we Liberia, even during the time of Taylor of Taylor, who everybody knew to be a bad president. No CIA delegation left from America to come here. But Mr. We are on a watch. He has such incident taking place. It is scary. It is bad. And I'm urging all Liberians come October 10, 2023 to join with CYM to kick this group of criminals, those group of gangsters who have come, they have looked, they have come and ended all that they are working of me. They get justified. Thank you. Thank you so much. Follow the language. Uh, colleagues to the panelists and colleagues to the Liberian people. Oh, I just called to say that Joe Weir is a one-term president, and we're going to do everything in our effort by the grace of God to live on the diaspora to go back home to see how best we can campaign for Joseph Nima Boaka. And I also want to extend my thanks to my father-in-law who was in Cito, Dr. Maraba. Uh, I'm from the Toledo, Ohio too. Yeah, he's one of my Bible here, serving as president for the Library American Association here. I want to say thank you there, and may God richly bless all of you people. Bye. Thank you. Uh, Dupont, I think you just have to take three more calls, and that yeah. will the end. I will just take whatever come to me after your three calls. Take three more calls, because almost four hours. Yeah, and then the other gotta go. Martin gotta go. Hello? Yes, you're live on the program. You have one minute. Please go ahead. Well, let me say thank you to the panelists. My name is Prince Renjo, and I call from, from Capitol Hill. You have one minute, please. Uh, I listen attentively and religiously to the president uh, address to the nation. I think it was all about deception to the Liberian people. You know, this coming election in October, Liberia will be at the crossroads. This is no time for play, no time for joking. We must unseat President We are democratically because it will be in the interest of the Liberian people. There are many of us, many parents, Many families who go to bed with hunger. There are many people can afford even rental fee. There are people who are struggling even to get uh, some to go to school. I listen to the president's deception. The president is deceiving the Liberian people. We must end this nightmare. You know, uh, the one child basically said that the country is pregnant with an evil baby. That <laughs> there is pregnant also with an evil child. Come October, let us abrogate this evil baby and not allow the child to be born. Thank you for affording me the opportunity. Thank you so much. And this caller is on the line. Hello. Hello. Hello, Chief. What is your name and where you join us this evening? My name is Jackson of course, and I join you from this respect. Please, you have one minute. Go ahead. Thank you for the topic of discussion. I, uh, Liberia is like a country that we live this evening when we listen to the countless deception for in the president's story. We 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 start after a while we noticed that we saw a lot of deception but we thought that those things were were something that we should believe. But when we follow the president, sometimes some of these things are our personal experiences. Now we have the president giving all these lies, we start to think of where we are going, Liberia is at a crossroads, and the Liberians are following. Most especially we, the young people, how are we going to make our decision when we are being played on by our stomach? Today, 
we were stoned until then, our decision in October, we are stoned. Thank you. Parents, who was rushed now to deliver our country. Thank you we so much. Thank you. So, my last call for tonight. Hello. 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 Yeah, this is Bobby, Bobby. Okay, Ms. Uh, Chief Vani, please go ahead. Uh, sorry, yeah, I want to tell you, I want to commend that if you know, that's really a thing. It's a bad feature for the Latin The thing about the Latin is a bad feature. Latin has a school and a fast body are going to. So, other countries, that's the coming of all the citizens, they come out and say it's a generation. Thank you so much, Chief. Uh, it's a pleasure having you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, on the long way. Thank you so much. Uh, this is Afro Konoa, and I joined the conversation tonight for my Waterloo resident. Yeah, you got, uh, one, got one minute. We've been here long. want to close. You got one minute. Thank you so much. Uh, I just want to say this quickly. I think the president saw now another big speech, and I think uh, there are so many things in there that we can we can we can we can capture that he failed to tell the library book and i would just back to him a few this president failed to tell us how much money was raised under the period from the airport from covid 19 testing the president failed to tell us under the period how many corruption cases he adjudicated in his government and how much money was recovered this president failed to tell us how many crimes that was committed on his period and what the government did to deal with those crimes. This president failed to okay. tell us. Your one, your one minute call, we gotta go, we gotta go. Uh, DJ, DJ Lomel, go ahead. Thank you, Honorable Pia. Let me say good evening to the class with the family. And you know, the president shot himself in the legs today. That one minute, sir. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. He said, when last the president get to know for the past five years that Liberian civil servant were on were on pay. So the president shot himself in the legs today. Thank God. You know that God continue to expose this guy. And thank you to Honorable Korba today. Honorable Korba was the only man that rise in our house today and say, you need part you we are we are we are you need to part them we are we are we are we are ANC we are all the opposition was sitting down but they were picking this man to come back and he walked for a Monday and continue to shout we are we are we are you need to part them we are we are we are no you can call by his man to the to the opposition and because she, this man went to campaign today it was it's a campaign speech and I then carry on but honorable Kolba left there and making to know that the liberal people are brave and honorable Kolba is a brave man I hear Honorable Korba today for what he did because then he went to campaign. Honorable Korba showed him the way. Take it to the Liberian people, and this is the time that God has exposed these people who are exposing that not going to take the, 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 another six years because the Liberian people go down the drain. That today, President, we all know that the civil servant will not pay, but because he wants to play politics, okay, thank the civil servant will be used as a liar, use a motor Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. When come to election, but it's only election for the Nayam Moon and off the street. Thank you. Uh, Saros. Uh, is Sarah on? Uh, hold on. When the people get on the on the call, they don't want to leave. When you say you get one minute, just 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 watch that you got a short time. Uh, okay, Stephen. Um, I think we can end it there. Yeah. Yes. yes. I think we four hours. hours. Yeah. <laughs> I think I gotta go. Just uh, do your closing so that you can. Okay. I want to keep you long. Just do your closing. Um, it was a pleasure, and I really and truly would like to recommend. Please get a yeah. copy of Professor's book on yeah. 
the life of DMB from yeah, Korea to the capital. I to get a copy. I got. We got to read yes. that book. My yeah. parents don't read, but it's a oh, it's. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love reading about it. I, where all he, all the places. The life of DMB is the life of most of our fathers mm -hmm. of that generation and before. So I related to it and I thank him so very much. And I purposely read the story. I mean, the foreword by the president at the time. How do you say such glowing tributes to a man? And then the next year, you just, it, it, it was mind boggling to me. So that was it. Um, every opposition to the caller, every opposition in the country is divided. Okay, Prince Johnson's party, MDR, they fighting there. MPP, they are fighting there. Um, so people should stop pretending that it's just you know United Party or whoever. Everybody's in confusion, and exactly. everybody's trying to sort themselves out. The only thing I will ask the opposition, if they're really opposition is that when we do go to the runoff, uh, I'd like to be a one-off if we can get a first round victory, but I won't be that optimistic. I'm saying if we go to the second round, I would like to think that the Liberty Party under Nyombli Kanga and the ANC with Mr. Cummings, would give their support to the unity party and don't play the little selfish games that we played in 2017 that has all of us here all of us because you can't i won't put all the blame on mrs salif because unit uh anc and liberty party didn't help much and uh i make no apologies for my emotions i'm a very emotional person I'm very proud of my emotions. I love my country. That's where I was born. That's where I was nurtured. And so anytime my country is disgraced, as, as it has been over the past five years, I will step up and say something. And to all of the mothers, the women in Liberia, I saw a whole lot of them today outside the Capitol in their lapa, singing and dancing, et cetera, et cetera. You give six more years to George Weir, all of your children will become drug addicts. All of your daughters will become prostitutes. They will not be able to give you any grandchildren in the future. More guns will come into the country and more criminals will come into the country, as we've seen. Under the WIA government, all kinds of nefarious people have come in, wielding influence. We've got to rescue our country. It's serious. Thank you all. Good night. Be here next Monday, inshallah. Good night. Good night, Amiata. We'll see you on Monday. It was a great, uh, it was great having you here, as always. Um, be safe out there, and uh, we'll see you soon. We'll talk to you. Um, <clears throat> Pastor Mo, uh, Yvonne, Yvonne, yo, of course, um, we always support anybody who will go against George. Well, uh, well, of course. Indeed. Well, <clears throat> it has been a great show. And uh, what I can say to our brothers and sisters back home, George will have given a farewell speech. It's time for us to put our acts together. It's time for us to talk to our brothers and sisters also. As long as you are not for the CDC, you are an opposition. So let us vote Nobel Joseph Borka to take Liberia from where it is. And as a close, I say to Honorable Barkai, as you win and ascend as the next president of Liberia, my finger is up. I want to be among that team that will carry on the arrest of corrupt officials of government. 
I want to be on that team. There's no compromise. I can swear on that. We're not compromised. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jupo. Marty, I'll be there. After Jupo, you go in. Yeah, so I, I just want to express my heartfelt appreciation to the team for yet another opportunity. Mm -hmm. Isn't the don't call don't call those people that data again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it. <laughs> so I I don't I don't put it on they they put it in the degree there. They end it. They deserve not a little crap. You know, you know, you know, I, I actually get it. And yeah. <laughs> so I just but, want to say I mean uh, many thanks to the team. I'm actually grateful. And it's actually a good thing being here. And Always being here is, is actually a good thing. Learning new things from uncles, fathers, and big brothers. I mean, it's actually good. I'm humble and thanks to the team. So very kind there. Thank it's you. also good to keep you here. You know, um, you're practicing generally as a young man yourself. Um, the experience we share here is something that will help guide you in your in your career, in 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 life endeavors, the experiences you're on the platform with, uh, for example, Auntie Miata, Auntie Miata in her seventies, uh, she brings a lot of experiences to this conversation. Pia, also Pastor Mo, uh, Martin, and you listen to Dr. Malapa, a very experienced man, educated man, man with uh, with, with strong human resource and capacity. Um, come here, share like it's good. Uh, it's good. Uh, when we were young, in your shoes, those were. The kind of opportunity we we wanted. Uh, I'm glad you you're living yours. Um, it's always good to have you here, Martin. Is Martin um, there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm yeah, here. Your, 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 uh, your closing comments. So, I would like to to say, I really appreciate this opportunity to come on. Thanks to you. Uh, veteran Zizu and Veteran Pia for the opportunity. It is always a privilege to, to share our thoughts with our people. And I really, really appreciate uh, that uh, Malakpa, you know, he inspired me a lot. And he has made me to believe that this ability is not inability. Imagine graduating from Harvard University with a doctorate degree, doctor of philosophy. Indeed, this ability is not inability. Come again, Stephen. You are. I think he was tapping a class among people who could see. Exactly. Exactly. And I would like to encourage the community of PWDs, persons with disabilities in Liberia, to emulate his example. He is the truest example of how a person with disability can invoke real change in any society. He really, really inspired me. And I hope, Stephen, you were you you were giving me his WhatsApp number for CSCC to talk to him. Yeah, I'll get you in contact and tap and into his knowledge and expertise. Yeah. You know, for a new Liberia. But quite frankly, I say thanks to Jupo. My first time seeing Jupo. He's Jupo a very is, brilliant is, man. Jupo is in the 12th grade, my man, in, in Ball County. You're killing me. I'm serious. And he makes a lot of sense, even more than the president. <laughs> Jupa makes a lot of sense. I started listening to him. I thought he's a graduate of a university. No, he's, 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 he's just uh, he's in the 12th grade in, in, in oh, the school. Wow. wow, he's very smart. He's mm -hmm. very smart, eloquent, and brilliant, you know? And I think we 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 have to keep him near. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. Uh, thanks to Veteran Pia. Thanks to Reverend, Reverend Mo. Uh, you know, I, I really, really appreciate this uh, opportunity. Thanks to the entire team from the class reloaded. Like Steven said, uh, we actually need to pay attention to all of the lies. And I'm going to commit my time tonight 
to put together all the lies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've identified like 15 now. I'm still identifying more. So we identify all the lies and we need to come on because we haven't said anything of the, about the sonar, right? No. We haven't said anything yet. So we identify all of the lies. I'm suspecting like 1,000 lies. Yeah, so we'll put everything together and then tell the Liberian people the truth. But I want to lay on this note quickly, Stephen. Uh, yeah, some of the failures, right? I just want to name 20. Okay. Because we released some today and the people have read sufficiently. A lot of people have shared, so the message is gone already. So no need of repeating. So yeah, some of the failures of the regime on George We Are. Number one, Lone Star Air. Number two, one million jobs. Number three, Coastal Highway. Number, number four, seven soccer stadiums. Five, Twin City on Bali Island. Six, 2,000 housing units in West Point. Seven, four Israeli companies. Eight, 22 UAE investors. Nine, two overhead bridges in Congo Town. Ten, ELWA RRA falling rule. 11 agriculture bank 12 mineral resource swap 13 we had factory 14 6000 nigerian teachers 15 2000 light poles across Moserado county 16 empowerment of 250000 street and out of school youth 17 free loan for market women 18 Visa upon arrival, 19, one football academy, number 20, new broadcast complex for LBS. I want to stop here, Stephen. <laughs> but we've listed, we've listed almost 100 film yeah, the the regime. Place. And to conclude, Stephen, I just want to quote what the man said in crew, which summarizes his entire speech. Uh, let me look for it. He said in his speech, um, one minute, please. Okay, this was what he said in his speech. He spoke crew. He said, I jacked up boxing. I don't know. I jacked up boxing. Somebody just said in the meeting because my mother is a crew. He said, It's hard. It's difficult. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, it's it's hard, hard, it's hard, it's hard, it's difficult. So if something is hard, it's difficult and rough, why are you wasting our time with three hours to the one minute speech? You feel all right. Eh? Why you won't waste our time about re election? So it is time to boot him out. And I want to make this passionate appeal to the opposition. Somebody asked me who I am for. I am for Liberia. I am for the opposition against George Weah. I want to be very clear about this. Any opposition leader against George Weah support you. Right. And this is why I want to re-emphasize the point anti matter make. I mean made. Because it's important. Whoever goes second round, whether JMB, Tiawan Gonglo, or Kumis, it is still an opportunity for us to vote against we are. If the opposition political leaders cannot unite in round one, well, they can go individually, but we have to get a consensus on the second round. Yeah, like in the case of Gambia, opposition leaders got a consensus about the second round against the Ayah In Nigeria, the case of Buhari, opposition leaders got a consensus. Say, okay, we can go individually, but when second round comes, whoever goes with the ruling class, we we combine our forces and vote against. So that is what I'm doing. And I want to say this on your platform, right? I'm going to engage uh, Ambassador Buaka, former Vice President Buaka. I'm going to engage uh, Kassado Tewon Gonglo as well as Mr. Cummins, you know, for us to build a consensus around that. Yeah, uh, uh, because as it stands, really, we can still see how it is possible to unite. But if it is not possible... Then we have to unite in second round, whoever goes second round. Yeah. Worst case scenario, if the election is free and fair, we are might not go second round. But if it is not free and fair, he goes second round, we have to unite our common frontier and put this man out once and for all. He is a nightmare. He does not have the skills, the capacity, the competence, the qualification to lead even a community, least to mention a country. Nowhere in this world a we are can be voted as community chairman. What more about president? This is a national disgrace. 
So I'm calling all Liberians listening to me across Radio Land. Think twice. Think about your children's future. I want to beg you. This is this, not because, oh, say, for example, Martin wants to come back home. Do I want to come back home? Yes, I want to come back home. And I can come back home when we are as empowered. But it is about the people. Because at the end of the day, if we are get second term, the country is damaged. The future of your children is damaged also. Your future is damaged. Assets more years to your age, my people. Our people in Bond County, your their assets more years to your age. Let's be simple English now. Our people in West Point, your assets more years to your age. And see the damage that will be caused as a result of the incompetence in this particular man. The man is not only incompetent, Stephen, but the man is corrupt. Yes, yeah, the case, right? At least if the men are incompetent and transparent, then it's manageable. But the man is not only incompetent, but the man is very corrupt. In less than six months, look at what the man has acquired. At the expense of the poor people in West Point, the man rose to power on the back, sweat, tears, and suffering of the poor people. And he treated them the way he treated them. I heard the students complaining just two days ago in Nima. They created a blockade on Ganta Sani Kode. I will no Kaku pass. Because their lecturers had gone go slow as a result of no funding. So they were other school. And access to education is a universal right. So they had to protest. And we supported that protest fully. Nima must stand up against Weah. Grand Jida must stand up against Weah. He promised you to connect the road from Ganta, Saklepia, Tapeta to Zwedu. Where is that road today? Prices in the Southeast have skyrocketed. Have scar scar so is this the kind of man you want to vote for again? Let's be real. Let's be honest. Politics is not tribal. Politics is not religious. Politics is about the ultimate interest of the country. Tomorrow, all of us, all of us in this century, the foreign first century will be judged by our action. What did we do? That would be the question from posterity. What did we do to remove this man? What, which action did we take? I call on Liberians in the diaspora. You have your people back home. The men were even talking about remittances, Stephen. He mentioned remittances. He said remittances have increased. A president in Liberia is being proud because remittances have increased. He ain't got a party. <laughs> the man doesn't even know that party. That when you say remittances from the US, Canada, France, the other <laughs> people are was... suffering. I was saying when they're dying. Exactly. That means more, more people don't even have the means to survive. So they've been depending on their people abroad to send them five dollar, ten dollar, fifteen dollar, twenty dollar. The man doesn't even know what he's saying. He said remittances have increased, and we are proud of that. See trouble. Look at the, look at the kind of trouble. I thought you should empower people in the country. To act out a living without depending on people abroad. Because Liberians abroad to have responsibilities. They can't keep catering for Liberians at home. So the government in authority needs to maximize the resources of the country and equitably distribute those resources so that our people benefit, reduce inequality. Inequality in that country is the driver of poverty. How do we reduce it? He doesn't even cons he, he doesn't even care about that. So I just want to make this. Plea to our people. Please, we beg you. If you are serious about change in that country, Mr. Weir is not an option. You listen to Ante Mata, you listen to Stephen Johnson, you listen to Jeremy Le Pierre, you listen to Michel Dupont, you listen to Reverend Windia, you listen to Dr. Uh, Marakwa, you've listened to a lot of great speakers. Great speakers and patriots in the country making this plea to you. Yes, we've made a mistake. And this is a very grave mistake that we made. An opportunity to correct this mistake has come. So let's correct it, my people. I beg you. I beg you. Our people in the various slum communities. Look at what we've published. L go to Nemo report, in fact, thanks to Eddie Jawolo of Nemo. Out of 252 plus promises, they may only achieve eight percent. It's just like when you send your child to school, right? Pay thousands ATR. of dollars. Yeah, and your child comes with his report card or her report card and say, "Mom or Dad, I have eight or a hundred. How can you be a proud parent, Fetchin Pia? How can you be a proud parent? Eight or a hundred? 
I say you don't see who uh, and that is, for your tuition. You bring her or owner to me. That's it. That's interesting, Marie, because you, you you know I'm a classroom teacher. I I taught in a school you graduated from, so exactly. I know what it means to academically assess people uh-huh. in terms of those percentages. We are should be ashamed of himself. Uh, he's a disgrace to our country. But anyway, I will close. Just 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 complete. And the point is, now I'm saying you, yeah, an independent civil society group supported by the U.S. Embassy, Osiwa. UNDP, you know, all these international firms or organizations. Now I'll say no, don't say that activists or a politician or a journalist say you. No, that civil society people say you made eight or hundred, eight percent. And you still want to convince all that you pass. How can you pass? They were just giving MCC grant to other countries, they left you off. Twelve fool you that you pass in MCC scorecard. <laughs> the, the, the point of the matter is the better does not fit in that position. The executive mansion is different from the football fee. Actually, the librarian people mistook a kino man for a pilot in 2017. Must we allow this plane to crash totally, my people? We must remove this quote-unquote pilot who is more of a kino man and then bring people with the ability Qualification, competence, integrity, patriotism, to leadership. That's why I said we need to repress the button on governance. So thank you for the opportunity, um, thank you. Stevie thank and, you and, and Pierre. Uh, I really appreciate. But like I said, hopefully maybe Wednesday we can talk about all the lies in his speech. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk you behind know, the same more. You know, Give him, Mr. We are three hours, 21 minutes, 66 pages. It's almost looking like giving a mankini man Medical equipment to perform surgery in a hospital. It's, un- it's, it's unfortunate. Thank you for thank, the opportunity. You. God bless Liberia. It's God always bless good our seeing you, uh, yeah. uh, the voice of Martin <laughs> King, colleague, uh, exile Liberian activist there, um, on, on, uh, joining us in class. Martin, it's always a pleasure to have you. Veteran Pia, take us home. Come here. Mr. So we are, is a very dishonest man. And he's a troubleist. We gave him six years. He failed miserably. He decided to confess that he failed. But rather than doing that confession so that all Liberians, irrespective of the tribal group they belong to, will hear from him confessing that he has failed, though you are delivering a speech in English, which almost everybody in the population will understand. When it came to accepting that he has failed, he decided to say it in crew. And he pretended that he was crying when he said, oh, yakla, buddy. my people, a hard, a difficult. If you are confessing to us as a country that is hard and difficult, why didn't you say it for everybody to understand and require either a person who understands crew or only the crew people to know what you say and come back to us? And if you are aware that, oh, Jackla, why are you still asking for six more years? When you already know it hard, a difficult, as you say, in crew, at a point where you, you were pretending, out of dramatizing that you were like crying. Why didn't you open your mouth in English and just tell the library and put this thing you're giving? They yeah. are. It's difficult. At least we all would have understood that. You didn't have to talk it in crew or yakla. That's dishonesty. That's dishonesty. And who is being this dishonest? Reverend Pastor George Manowia. I guess just this Sunday you were in church sitting in a high spot on the altar in your church. He came from Qatar and boasted that uh, they were bringing 100 million from Qatar to add to the Lofa Road. Why didn't he report that today in his sermon? For those who listen, they say he didn't talk about it. This is the most recent thing you achieved. The time you are taking to talk about 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021 things. At least the one that the time you went to Qatar. 
if you are convinced that you are saying truth, because we, we, we said you lie, we told the public you lie, why didn't you talk about, why didn't you report on it? The reason why the State of the Union is a year in, year out thing and it's done every year, is because the anticipation is you giving the State of the Union as of that year you're reporting on. If you should mention anything about the past, then it should be like maybe a certain thing you launched that you reported on last year, but certain kind of progress has been made on that thing in 2022. So you want to give that progress account, then you will mention it. But it's not a it's not a, it's not a platform to go and start taking five years that tautology and come and, and bore us with it. Look, no matter what how educated you are, nobody sits in a place and one person talking blah 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 blah, 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 blah for three hours and you take anything serious. I will sit here. One of the reasons why I'm a Catholic and why I love the Catholic Church, and in the US it's even sweeter to be a Catholic than even back home because our people back home they started sleeping alone, almost following the Pentecostal thing, you go to church there almost three hours. Some preachers going to the altar, they want and the Pentecostal men preaching for almost one hour. Yeah, the preaching and everything that will happen in the service, one hour. So when the, when the priest comes on the altar to preach. When he does so for 15 minutes, it's too much. Because in that one hour, somebody can leave the church and the core of the message of that day will remain with the person. No matter how educated, if you sat down for somewhere three hours and somebody talking to you, why you take it away from that place? If I along the way, after one hour, people start sleeping. Yeah. A whole speech of talk. And then moreover, who is reading the three hours, 21 minute speech? Can I even entertain her? Somebody who is sixth grader year in our school system on this side can read better than. Pure the service to the country. As a president, you say, Don Jacqueline, many is high. That's why we want you to leave. Don't even fight as you're fighting. Begging people, those in laying on the ground, licking their shoe. Or Jack Clark. So why you still want to be there? That admittance that is difficult, is hard, to be the basis upon which you should say go back. And if you're a Liberian listening, and still say you support we are. If the man who has the power now says, or Jack Clark, which means hard, if you listen to that and still think you should be your president, Blame yourself for whatever you will face henceforth. Because then you putting that nail on your own coffin. And you blame yourself. Again, um, the Liberty Party and the UP will be responding tomorrow. I said the Liberty Party is at 11 o'clock at the Capitol. The UP is at 12.30 at the party headquarters. And this is what I want to say to those two groups. This platform is here for you. Martin had to sacrifice whatever he's supposed to do to come on. You just heard him saying, because he want to dig deeper into the State of the Union's address, you'll be back here on Wednesday, probably Friday. When you deliver your very responses tomorrow, please send people from your parties, the two parties, to join us on Wednesday on the class reloaded to elevate for whatever you will be saying tomorrow. The sooner all of you realize that these intermittent addresses, media addresses, will not do. And if you have a platform where three days in the week, you can make your case, you can talk about the country, it is just for fair that you make use of it. Because those intermittent ones, they don't last, they're not sustainable, they're not going to help us. After all, when you read whatever your response is tomorrow, what happened after that? What happens? That's it? You can stretch it further by coming here. Deep, deeper into it. This historical accident that we brought upon ourselves and our country. <laughs> The opportunity is here to remedy that. It requires the effort of all of us 
young Mitchell that you pour is in Liberia. I guess it's, it's going to want one. It's going to want a m right, Jupa. Twenty nine yeah. minutes. <laughs> yeah, just mute. Yeah, just mute. And the young man is still sitting up, paying his quota. And we're all sitting out there acting lazy. Even like we should be begged for a cause that we say we're committed to. The ball is in your court. You got barely eight months to the elections. This is no more time for processes. This is no more time for protocols. All of those processes and protocols will cut away, we catch up with you. And if the goal is ready to remove, we are. Don't let anybody beg you to be a part of processes that we have to remove you. Then utilize what we have. Let's utilize what we have. And thank you to our people. Those of you who committed to the JMB agenda who are coming on. For me, I'm excited. Because over the weekend, I was part of a delegation that led JMB to uh, the church in, in, in Philadelphia, where the funeral service of Dr. Cassell was held. I met the old man in person. We attended the funeral. Then we drove back to Delaware to his, to his dwelling place. After the funeral, we went back to Delaware. We left that place uh, 10 p.m. in the night. So it was several, several hours with him. I saw how alight he is. I saw how energized he is. And I can only say to the people who are wishing him evil, people who are celebrating because he checked into a hospital, if that was the only thing you are waiting for to clear your way to the presidency because he's the only man who can stop you, find another means than because he's strong, he's well, he's able, up to the time we were leaving, 10 o'clock. In fact, when we left for the funeral, we got back home. Up to 10 o'clock, we were leaving. The man has not gone to bed. He was still up. That's how strong this man is. Nothing is taking him anywhere anytime soon. In 2017, some of you wishing dead. The sixth year you got after that, the sixth year gone, he's still here strong. You're praying again for that. You will live with his presidency. You don't have a choice. And for us, we keep playing our role. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, the program has been so sweet that I imagine we'll be full hours. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So let, let me close quickly, guys. Uh, I, I, I enjoy it. Uh, let me say a big thanks to all of our radio stations. That's uh, Bushra Radio FM 98.1. Yeah, was the program on air? Your, your premium FM carrying it live? Yes, yes. You know, each time, each time I'm in the studio, I am using a device. Yeah, to actually air it too. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. So that's um, that's uh, um. Uh, let me say a big thank you to our uh, Bushra Radio FM ninety eight point one in Montserrado, Premier FM ninety eight point one in Bangapong County, Radio Tupa FM. 89.1 in Grand Basel, Voice of Lofa FM 99.3 in Lofa, Radio Joy Africa FM 97.5 in Magiri, and of course, Voice of Compa FM 106.5, all the way there in Lima Chupo. It's been a wonderful time. Pia, Martin Colley, uh, Pastor Mo, Ente Miata, and of course, our guest, Dr. Sikwi Marakpa. It's been a pleasure having you all tune in. To, uh, thanks to all of our folks in the comment section. It's been a wonderful show. See you on Wednesday, God's willing. But we'll bring you another edition of the program, The Class Reload. I've been your host, your humble servant, Stephen Johnson, saying God bless you. And you have yourself a wonderful, 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 wonderful rest of the evening. God bless you all and bye-bye. Let me get our... Uh... Uh -huh, uh -huh. My people, where you at? Where you at? Wake up on your stomach. Stop sleeping. Uh-huh, uh-huh, whip your hands, whip your hands, whip your hands, whip your hands, come on, come on, come on. I know you're sleeping now, you gotta whip us more, yeah? Okay, let's go.
Ya me muera que